have started with a field of 16 teams. Now we're down to the final two. It's the 15th ranked Western Kentucky Hilltoppers taking on the number one ranked and top seeded McNeese State Cowboys at the NCAA Division I AA Football National Championship. Our kickoff is just around the corner. We are getting ready to settle a championship on the field. Finley Stadium in Chattanooga, Western Kentucky, taking on McNeese State in just a matter of moments. We're glad to have you with us here in the studio. Reese Davis along with Bill Curry and Jim Donnan. Guys, looking forward to a terrific game tonight. Bill, it was just a little over a decade ago that couldn't even imagine Western Kentucky being in this position because they weren't sure they were going to have a football team. I was in Bowling Green, Kentucky. It was January of 1992. And the president called Jack Harbaugh and said, we're going to have to discontinue football. Jack had the meeting with the team, gave him the bad news, went back to his office, got angry and went back and said, wait a minute, let's work at this thing. He got the support of the community, the support finally to get to the, the Board of Education, or whoever makes those decisions in the state of Kentucky. Then he got the formidable Harbaugh family, including son Jim, who collected old shoes from his <laughs> teammates from the Indianapolis Colts. And here they are, 11 and 3, going to play for the national championship for the first time in their Division One AA history. And it's just wonderful. It's and, a great story. And Bill, you know, Jim was a fixture in this game. Jim, you have all kinds of experience in one AA championship games. You took Marshall there four separate occasions. What's going through the mind of the coaches right now? I guarantee you this right now, Reese, everybody in that locker room is looking at the chance to win the national championship on the field. Uh, what uh, the coaches are talking about is let's play our game, let's play w what got us here, let's play with enthusiasm and avoid penalties, stress the kicking game. We're playing for the big Chilardo, man. Let's go for it. You know what, you know what Donnie used to do? He used to ride steamrollers and say, you're either going to be the steamroller or the pavement. We'll see who does that. Coming up in just a matter of seconds, McNeese State, they've lost one time this year to Nebraska. We'll see if they can top it with a title. Ron Franklin and the guys now. Thanks, Reese. Here we are in Chattanooga, Tennessee, not too far from Track 29. And tonight, the 1AA championship between Western Kentucky and the top seed and top-ranked McNeese State Cowboys. Here are the brackets and how they got here. McNeese got to stay at home. They won over Montana, then won over Villanova last week. Both come from behind efforts. And for Western Kentucky, they had to win both of theirs on the road. They won over Western Illinois, and then knocked off the number two seed, Georgia Southern, just last week. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Mike Godfrey back here in Chattanooga again. We did this game last year, and it was a lot of fun. Mike Godfrey, earlier this year, Western lost to McNeese. You know, as a former coach, how difficult it is to beat a team twice in one season. Well, Ron, the coaches have told their football team, these coaches, that the experts say you can't do it twice in a season. Let's prove them wrong. McNeese, we figured they'd be here. They're the number one ranked team in the country. Western came out of nowhere, 15th ranked team in the country. Both these teams run the football. Whatever team gets off to the best start is going to win this game. And I'm excited about being here in Division <laughs> One AA Championship. Well, as I said, we had fun here last year, and I think we're going to have fun again tonight. Jack Harbaugh, 14th season as the head guy at Western Kentucky. And this is the first time that the Hilltoppers have played in a national championship game in football. Over on the other side of the field, Tommy Tate. Third season at McNeese. He has made quite a mark. You see that winning percentage at 76%. McNeese has won the toss and they have deferred so Western Kentucky will receive to get this ball game underway. Now how about the weather this time last night it was miserable blowing and just raining like the Dickens temperature right now 48 degrees humidity is low and uh, partly cloud no chance of rain in the forecast Wind maybe a slight factor at times tonight we'll talk more about that as John Marino has it teed up and we are set to go for the one double a national championship in college football three yards deep they're going to return it that's John Frazier Frazier 15 20 toppled at the 25 yard line so the starter at quarterback he wears number 10 Jason Michael he started off at West Point at the U.S. Military Academy, decided he wanted to transfer. He is out of Louisa, Kentucky, 5'10", 200 pounds, and quite a story because he worked himself into a starting position, then lost it, but this year he has been the man.
McNeese showing blitz in the very first play and they come off the corner here's the option as the pitch back goes to the tailback and John Frazier is going to have two maybe three very tough yards here are the running backs and the wide receivers Frazier along with Jeremy Johnson the huge fullback he weighs 275 Hayes and Reeves the wide receivers Rufus Sanders you talk about huge he weighs 360 he's the tight end and up front with the offensive line Chris Price the left guard is an all-American with throw out at right tackle normally starts in the middle at center but because of an injury to big buster Ashley two weeks ago that is the change that they have had to make and there you look at Rufus Sanders 6 8 they say 340 Mini cheeseburgers beyond that. Mike. He's 360 if he's announced. Second down and six. Quick out pass has this one complete, and that's uh, Casey Rooney incomplete. Or uh, the play is being whistled down. Delay a game, Ron. So let's take a look at the defensive starters for McNeese. These guys up front are extremely good. Keep an eye on John Paul Jones out of Karen Crow. He is a transfer from LSU, extremely difficult to block. Royal and Garrison. Roderick Royal, a transfer from Florida. Garrison, a very steady player. And in the secondary, on the corners, White and Smith. But watch for number nine, Hadley Prince. He was player of the year in the conference. He's one of two strong safeties. Well, McNeese brings somebody off the corner again in the running play. Breaks off one tackle. He's going to have a couple of yards. That's Roderick Royal who comes over to make the tackle. And John Paul Jones is the man that I was talking about who disrupted the play up front. Yeah, he had disrupted the play up front. And then Hadley Prince, the 5'9 defensive back that plays like a linebacker, finished the tackle off on John Frazier. Mike, the man that we were wondering about tonight is starting in the ball game, and that's Jeremy Johnson, number one. Little case of the stomach virus you found out just before the game, right? Did not warm up in the uh, pre-game. Uh, Here comes pressure from the linebackers. Pass overthrown and incomplete at the 38 looking for Shannon Hayes and Adrian Karsten let's check with you a little bit more on Jeremiah Johnson the fact that he has the stomach flu is one thing it's the aches and pains now he has in his elbows especially in his knees and his ankles we all know about the stomach flu it's beginning to move through him and apparently throughout the rest of the team Ron this uh, started and cropped up late this afternoon now the fact that uh, he can go now may not be the case as the game wears on we'll have to keep an eye on him and the rest of his team well, we talked about getting off to a good start because both these teams are not great throwing teams. Well, this is a great punt into the win. It is going to go over the head of the deep back, Claiborne. And let's take a look at the starters for McNeese as they head on the field. Scott Pendarvis, a sophomore out of Walker, which is right outside of Baton Rouge. He went to Catholic in Baton Rouge. Uh, 6'3", 221 pounds, probably throws better outside the pocket. The backup, Corcoran, is the man who is much more a pocket passer. We'll take a look at the other starters on offense after this play. If it gets into a passing game, Pendarvis is probably better than Michael on, uh, for Western Kentucky. Prim gets the start at tailback. They throw on first down. Picked off at the 35 yard line. That's Mislowski, the linebacker, and it is first and 10 at the 27 yard line for the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Boy, Maslowski, the linebacker, just stepped in front of the Flea Martin, uh, the number two receiver for McNeese, and made that interception. We talked about, uh, as you watch Maslowski, he's going to walk right. Step right in front, make that interception. Last week against Georgia Southern, he caused a fumble and also recovered a fumble. So let's see if the Hilltoppers can take advantage. On that opening series, McNeese was sending somebody on every play to mess up their rhythm. Straight ahead with the running play, and John Frazier is going to have very short yardage. He'll take it, well, they're going to say to the 23 and a half as Fairchild comes over to make the tackle. I talked to Tommy Tate, the head coach of McNeese, and asked him what the difference was in the first game, whether they stopped Western Kentucky's power running game. He said, no, 
We never stopped it during the game. We got off to a 21 to nothing lead and just held on. Well, the one thing that the coaches for Western expect, and that is for McNeese to crowd and say, Jason Michael, beat us with your arm. Here's a pitch back on the reverse. This is Rooney. Gets by one tackle, takes it inside the 20 and down to the 16, and that should be enough for the Western first down. Fairchild makes his second tackle. And that's a good play call. They've got Western Kentucky's got two offensive coordinators, and that's a good play call because it's a misdirection play, and all of a sudden they'll slow down the pursuit of McNeese. Willie Taggart and Kevin Leitner are the offensive coordinators, co-coordinators for the toppers. Taggart, a former quarterback at Western Kentucky. Here's the first down. The ball just outside the 16. Western Kentucky 8-0 this year when they score first. From the I formation, they give it to the big fullback, Johnson. And Jeremy Johnson is going to be stopped for no gain as he is stuffed at the line of scrimmage. B.J. McNutt, the left defensive tackle, is there. Yeah, Ron, when you look at this game, uh, B.J. Sams, the wide receiver and kick returner in the first game, was a difference maker. I didn't get a chance to say because things were happening rapidly, but on the conference call, we asked Jack, if he would kick to Sam's and he said no we're going to kick out of bounds and that ball there was angled for the sideline and of course it got over Sam's head. Second down with about ten and a half for the first down. Right up the middle. A little bit more of an opening this time for John Frazier the senior out of Central City Kentucky and Ryan Garrison one of those two outstanding linebackers or McNeese coming over to make the tackle in Ron you wonder about Jeremy Johnson uh, the big fullback he didn't come out for the warm up he's got a block he's got a lead uh, block here looks like he's a little soft on that play you just wonder how he feels whether he can go this full game for Western Kentucky. There, there's a look at the big fella, 5'11", 275 out of Louisville. For Frazier, the tailback, he has four carries for only 14 yards. I think they're going to get a, another delay of the game here, penalty. Here's a problem, Ron, for coaches. Especially in playoffs. These referees are from the East. And the tempo of the game is set by the officials. And some some officials will set that ball quick and you're not used to the pace. They picked up two delay of game penalties already you know some first quarter and they didn't have one last week no. against Georgia Southern. I'm trying to find a 25 second clock down on the field. I know there's one up on this big scoreboard, but they're going the other direction. All right. You know, he may be having trouble picking that up as well underneath the game clock. There it is right there. Third down. They need to take it to the five and a half yard line. Again from the eye set. Here comes pressure, and they throw back a screen to the near side of the field, and it's Johnson. Runs over a man at the five, and he will score from 16 yards. Child had a shot at him and he ran right over it. Flew looks better, Mike. Yeah, it's a, it's a good play call, too, because of low back screen. Oklahoma State, when Larry Coker was the offensive coordinator, uh, they made this famous with Thurman Thomas and Barry Sanders in the Big Eight back then. And Jeremy Johnson gets away from Fairchild. Early score for the toppers. Martinez to attempt the extra point gets a good pass and his kick is perfect. So we will take one more look at the interception by Maslowski. As we said, Mike, he had a fumble recovery and caused a fumble last week. Now Maslowski made the play and set a good field position. McNeese has only had one play on offense, and now they got to answer the score from Jeremy Johnson, the big fullback. So we'll take a timeout. The one double A championship. The toppers go on top. Well, as you look at Jack Harbaugh, he knows that last week's win was huge for his program, but he also knows that tonight's game is really what it's all about. Oh, I felt after the ball game, I felt it, it, as if we just won the combination of the Super Bowl and the uh, national one double one A championship and one double A. I don't know if I've ever been so happy in my entire life. 
And then uh, about four o'clock on Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, I woke up in a cold sweat. There was a little bit of light drifting through the window. I thought, oh my Lord, we still have got a ball game to play in the national championship. Well, yeah, they do against an extremely good team and that is ranked number one in the country. And you look on the bench, uh, getting a little breather right there, Jeremy Johnson, who uh, scored the first touchdown, the youngster we talked about, who had uh, the stomach flu and didn't warm up. Martinez set to kick it off, and both of these return men can absolutely fly. It is going to come down to Martin. They call him Flea Martin. Wow, he gets whacked. Martin only weighs 147 pounds, and he paid for it right there. Now here are the starting lineups for McNeese. We didn't get a chance to get through them. Prim and Lawton in the backfield. Martin and B.J. Sams just talked about them. Jeff Hamilton, an outstanding all-conference tight end. And up front with the offensive line, it starts with at number 65 right there, Dwight Hubler, a junior out of Mesquite. Uh, he is all-conference and a very, very good performer. The, the center, Jason Davis, is a four-year starter. Straight ahead with this running play, and Jacob Prim is not going to get very much. Defensively, here are the starters for West. They run a 3-4. Mal Wilson and Reynolds. Reynolds outstanding. All-conference performer at rate defensive end. And the linebackers, Coach Tate and McNeese said these are the best four linebackers that they played this year, including Nebraska. Coach Thompson, Maslowski, and Drummond. And in the secondary, Burks and Chandler at the corners. And uh, Louder and Veals at the safeties. This is B.J. Sams, and he will take it out across the 27 to the 28-yard line. And, Mike, they like to get him, whether it's an end around, get him in the backfield, or run reverses because he is a game-breaker. He and Flea Martin both. Okay, he's the best player on the field, Ron. You're talking about Sams, but they're missing their number one tailback. They're right there, Vic King, not playing, averaging 5.6 yards a carry. The Southland Conference leading rusher has a knee and will miss this game. Now that's going to be movement. Roden at tackle came out of his stance, and instead of a third down and about four, it is going to be third down and nine. You know, both of these teams a little bit of a shaky start because in watching both semifinal games last week they didn't have this happening it's got to be I and mean, hey we're here for oh, the national championship they're nervous and Jack Harbaugh talked about it you, you know winning the national championship every game is a championship game Jim Donovan was talking about that in the studio show uh, you, you, you win it on the field right here well, they need to take this ball out to the 32 and a half yard line to keep the drive going. Pendarva sets in the pocket to throw. Now he's going to try to run it at the 25, at the 30, and he may have the first down. Ron, I think it's important for McNeese to go down this football field and answer the score of Western Kentucky. You're playing without your number one tailback in your run football team. Scott Pendarvis right here is going to see nothing in the passing game and sprint out to try to run for this first down. Gets a good block from Flea Martin. Now he's only 5'6", 147, but he can get in the way of a linebacker. Doesn't have it. Wow. What do you do, Mike? This early got to go for it. I, I, go for I it. think that's that close. I, I, don't, I don't think they can give Western. I, I talked so much about the getting off to a good start here. Well, Coach Tate, he's going to punt it. He's not going to take a chance. Or that is what it would appear from here because Jason Cook, number five, a redshirt freshman out of Moss Bluff, comes on to do the kicking. I go back to Ron. Neither one of these football teams are very good passing teams. They live on the run. So if you get behind by two touchdowns, then you're in trouble. Tell you what, Mike, the, they are kicking with the wind, and everything going in this direction was going about 10 or 15 yards further. So they could flip the field yeah. on Western right Ordinarily, here. I'd say kick the ball. I've always said kick the ball when you're back here. But in the championship game like this one, two good defensive teams, they may have drawn them offside right here. And here's the kick, and it's uh, Spiral's going to turn over. All the way back to the 20-yard line on a return is Veals. And Veals is hit immediately. That is excellent coverage on the special teams. 49 on the kick and 8 on the return. We'll take a timeout. 8.07 left in his opening quarter. 7-0 Hilltoppers. 
Here's a reminder, tomorrow at noon at ESPN2, it's the NCAA Division III Championship. Six-time champion Mount Union has earned the right to make another trip. They take on Trinity, Texas, noon on ESPN2. That's Saturday at noon, the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl up and, in Virginia. And Ron, Mount Union's coach Larry Karras won't have to contend with Trinity quarterback Roy Hampton. He's suspended through a pass for 4,000 yards and 43 touchdowns. Not playing. Shannon Hayes in motion, but they go with the run. And as Mike said, you know, aesthetically, you might be sitting there saying, well, this would get a little old. But John Frazier on that play right there has close to five yards. Garrison comes up from his linebacking spot to make the tackle. But that's Jack Harbaugh has another thing in mind. He wants to keep that McNeese offense sitting over here on the sideline and make that defense work while he runs time off the clock. Did yeah. the same thing last week against Georgia Southern, and it was extremely successful. Well, they want to be a physical football team and control the clock and also punch you in the nose on the other side. And here comes the fullback, a little counterplay, and Johnson. Jeremy is going to take that thing close to the 35 yard line. Chris White comes over from his right cornerback spot to make the tackle. Now, here is a very large third down. When I was talking to Tommy Tate, uh, the head coach of McNeese, he talked about this is the most physical team they played other than Nebraska. And when, you know, a lot of people could say they're as physical as Nebraska. See, Ron, I'm a believer there's not much difference between Division I AA and Division I. There's not much. A lot of great players, a lot of great teams yeah. in this division. Well, that could be the difference in the other one. is 22 scholarships. They get 63 in Division I AA. Here comes the option. Down the line of scrimmage, pitches the ball back, and as he turns the corner, here comes a flag from out deep. And I was about to say he just got himself a first down. But from where that's thrown, I think that's going to be holding. Yeah, you got to figure holding because it was strung out so far down the line of scrimmage. You figure somebody reached out. The other thing Jack Harbaugh talked about when I, I talked to him last night, he said in the playoffs, we beat Murray, no turnovers. We beat Western Illinois, no turnovers. Beat Georgia Southern, no turnovers. So they want to play an air free football game. But I believe that's a third penalty. Two delays and a Two holding. Two delays and now a holding. And uh, okay, so the penalty pushes it back to the 29 yard line. And it's going to be third down, and they need to take it out to the 37. You know, you talk about quarterbacks. Jason Michael averages throwing 11 times a game. Florida and Hawaii do that in the first two minutes. <laughs> it's a little comparison for well, you out there. Wait a minute. Hawaii, what did they throw? 59 straight passes yeah. in one ball. <laughs> Third down, Western. Play action, sets in the pocket. Going to be sacked. Now goes down. At the 27, pressure coming Hadley Prince and Ryan Garrison, and they come over to combine for the tackle. And go back again, Ron, to the decision to punt the football. It was the right decision because now you hold him and you get the ball back based on that penalty. Now let's see if he does kick the ball to B.J. Sams, the deep man. Sams has moved over to the middle of the field and he, he kicks it to this side. He is kicking it away from him and Sams on the run drops the ball and is able to make the recovery at the 24 yard line. Good thing he's a good athlete because he got right back on that football. I tell you what, Birch was all over him and that's a 49 yard kick. But as Adrian said, an inch and a half of rain in the last 24 hours. We'll take a break. Seven to nothing, Western. Western Kentucky on top of the hill right now, seven to nothing. Here on the McNeese side, they feel like it's taken them nine minutes to settle in. You need to remember the first time they played each other back on September 28th, McNeese had a week off, which means they actually had two weeks to prepare for Western Kentucky. This time, because of the game against Villanova on Saturday, two days, Ron, nine minutes to finally settle in. The miscues, the indecision here on the sidelines, the drop punt. Now they feel like they've got the ball back and they have a shot. Tell you what, Adrian, the drop punt. <laughs> They are very, very fortunate that they got that back. He probably should have run away from that thing. They need to establish the tailback prim. Well, he gets the handoff, and that's Lawton in front of him. And he's going to take it for three tough yards. 
Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, Adrian Karsten coming to you from the 1AA Football Championship in Chattanooga, Tennessee. At a full moon overhead, I don't know if that means that stranger things are going to happen tonight or not, but uh, this time last night, it was really ugly in this city. It was raining so hard, there was a tarp that was placed right down the middle of the field from hash mark to hash mark, but not on the sidelines, and that is the part that is beginning to tear up a little bit. Hamilton, the tight end in motion. They give it to Lawton, the fullback, and Luke, the junior out of Lafayette. <laughs> Lafayette, Louisiana, takes it out to the 34-yard line. That's a gain of six. On the quick handoff, John Drummond made the stop defensively. What you're going to see Western Kentucky do is slant and angle, and they'll move the middle guard, so they're always on the move. The slant tackle didn't make the play on Luke Lawton. Well, that's a good second effort by Lawton, and as a result, his team has third and very short. He gets the ball again and fights his way for what appears to be, yep, it's going to be a first down. And that would be the initial first down for McNeese in the ball game. You coming know, at the 450 mark. Yeah, Ron, you go. Uh, everything in football is cyclical and it comes back. This is the Michigan slant and angle defense that they ran in the 70s. Uh, and Jack Harbaugh believes in moving his defensive line around. So it's hard to hit a moving target. Hostelet checks into the ball game at fullback. Luke Blotton comes to the sideline. Darren is a senior out of Long Beach, Mississippi. Play action. And Darvis drills it, has it complete, and that is uh, Martin. Flea Martin will have it complete to the 44 and a gain of eight. We had the Batman this year, we got the Flea now. Jay Flea Martin, look at his feet. Folks, he is tiny. 147 tiny. pounds. <laughs> Louder just engulfed him. Tiny. I didn't say he's uh, smaller than that. Small as a flea. <laughs> there goes the pitch back to the tailback. Hit at the line of scrimmage. That is a tough defensive play. He's not going to have the first down. Prim, a senior out of Foley, Alabama, by way of Southwest Mississippi Junior College. Knocked on by Shaw and Charles Thompson, the inside linebacker. Charles Thompson, a very good football player, leader in tackles uh, for Western Kentucky with 148 tackles. Talk about hitting a lot of people. Third down at about two. Quick pass out in the flat, and he gets it to Sams, and Sams is going to be tackled at the 50-yard line. And this is what is so dangerous, because you can block downfield in college football when it is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. And, boy, you get him loose, and he's gone in a hurry. As Louder made the stop. Yeah, Jeremy Chandler, number 20, had a shot at him to keep him from the first down, but couldn't make the tackle. It's very difficult to tackle Sam's on the outside. Mike, there's a player down for Western, and this is a guy that they just cannot afford to lose. This is Maslowski, who had the interception just a moment ago. I mentioned last week had a fumble recovery and also caused a fumble in the Georgia Southern game. Ron, you talk about Maslowski, Eric Danby, who's from Mansfield, Ohio, played for Mansfield Senior High School, was the preseason All-American linebacker. He was lost, and Maslowski took over for him, and Danby coaches him on the sideline. So we'll take a timeout. 324 left in the opening quarter, 7-0 Hilltoppers. 7 to nothing, Mike, here is what happened to the linebacker, Maslowski. Yeah, both those guys, Maslowski is going to get hit away from the play and was not expecting to get hit. Tell you what, that, that tackle is made. That probably should have been a 15-yard yep. penalty. And Way particularly coming ball. to blindside him like that, that's... Uh, you always tell you guys, don't count your money out there. Don't yeah. count your change. Until you hear that whistle blow, and then beyond that, Getty Cabot, number 31, comes into the lineup. Just over three minutes to play, opening quarter. Pram hit hard at the line of scrimmage, and he gets whacked down by Charles Thompson. I'll tell you what, these two defensive clubs, both McNeese and also Western Kentucky, they will come after you. When they get there, they do some damage, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they really do. Uh, Western Kentucky moves just before the snap of the ball. So they're very active with their defensive linemen of movement in this football game. The offensive line for McNeese really has to do a good job. 
eighth play of the drive. On second and ten. Pressure is the throwback screen complete to the tight end. It's Hamilton, and he gets upended at the 48-yard line. It's going to be third down and long for McNeese as Cabot, who just came in the ball game, replacing Maslowski. Yeah, John Drummond also made the tackle. They did a great job of reacting to the screen. It's a throwback screen again. Well, Reynolds is the man who forced the play maybe to come a little quicker than, than they had wanted. John Drummond did the best job because he felt screen right away and stayed with the uh, receiver. Well, that's a good observation, Mike. McNeese, two of three on third down conversions in the pass in and out of the hands of Sams. Ball may be thrown just a little bit behind him, and then he got whacked by Brian Louder, the junior out of Bowling Green. Yeah, uh, that's still he should have caught that football. No. Louder, a 4-0 student, wants to go to law school. Uh, walked on and started off as a special teams player. In the first game, McNeese was 60% on third downs, and uh, Western Kentucky was two out of ten. So that's been the difference in that game. Cook with the kick, driving spiral, and going to be caught inside the 10 yard line I have a feeling that the head coach may say something to Beals because rather than planting his heels on the 10 yard line that was a driving spiral it appeared that one would get on into the end zone Saturday night the college basketball season continues at ESPN at 530 Ricky Paulden and the number 10 Missouri Tigers take on the 12th Frank fighting Illini that's the Bragging rights game in St. Louis and then at 8 o'clock over on ESPN 2 the number one ranked Arizona Wildcats led by Jason Gardner take on LSU you told me Missouri was pretty good because you told me they you thought they'd handle Memphis and I thought Memphis would play them a little bit better you were right Paulding is really a special player for them all so he's had to step up and he has worst field position of the night for Western and they're going to go on top and got a man wide open the fullback and they get it out to Jeremy Johnson all the way out to the 36 yard line and you talk about a smart play call rolling a 275 pound fullback out of the backfield. Yeah, they had him on the wheel route, Ron, which is where he comes out of the backfield. He's against the linebacker, Roderick Royal, and that's what you want. And when you look at Jeremy Johnson, 275 pounds, he's the second leading receiver on this football team. And so you know he has good hands. Second, uh, it's going to be 25 yards on that play. Also, Baker in the backfield as they line up in that tandem eye. Here comes the option back into the boundary and he will keep it and take it almost to the 40 yard line. Jason Michael, as we mentioned, transferred from Army. Right. Corbin warming up on the sideline. You go back to uh, a, a little bit more on uh, on Michael and then the, I'll, I'll just say this Corcoran came in. Not a good game for the starting quarterback against Montana. And it was Corcoran who came in and really rescued them. It's good when you have two quarterbacks yep. and one guy's not playing well. Of course, on that last pass, he threw to Sam. Sam should have caught that yeah, ball. Yeah, he should have. Well, one of the things that uh, they talked about is the backup is always going to play for McNeese. They play a lot of people. Quarterback keep. And not enough for the first down. About two, two and a half yards <laughs> short as Royal comes over to make the tackle. 23 down to 22 seconds left in the quarter. You talked about Jason Michael, uh, Ron. He went to the Army. Uh, Bob Sutton. Uh, we remember we had them one year. They were nine and zero and going into Syracuse. The, he re ran the option. He liked Michael as a player and recruited him to Army. Well, he has waited his turn here at Western. We'll take a timeout at the end of the opening quarter. Western Kentucky on top, seven and nothing. So that's the end of the first quarter and as we head to the second 15 minutes Western Kentucky on top by the way the numbers out there on the left that is the ESPN national ranking 15 in the nation and one double A is Western and McNeese the number one ranked team in one double A according to the ESPN poll. Big opening and gone 20 50. 
15, Tan 5, Frazier, touchdown, 55 yards. As the celebration goes on across the way, I want you to go back and reiterate what we talked about off the top of the telecast. And we wondered, we got a long, long way to go in this football game, but that McNeese, since they won by 25 points the first time they played, that maybe the guys didn't focus in. Now they got to focus now, which they can do. Tell you the other thing, Ron, this is the first game they've had away from home for a month. I mean, nice has been playing at home. Western's been on the road. The advantage Western. John Frazier just hits up in there. Watch the big guy there, the big fullback. Got a nice block by Joe Washington, number 77. Keith Smith really showed some good speed trying to catch Frazier. Well, well, he should because Keith Smith, Mike, is two times the Louisiana State 400-meter champion in track. And he did have some closing speed on him, but it was not enough to bring him down. And it is 14 to nothing Western as we have just played at the very first play of the second quarter. And go back to your question around when we started this game. How tough is it to, to win twice over the same team? I saw advantages both teams. The one, if you win the game, you know you have confidence you can win the game. If you lose the game, then you look at that tape and say, hey, if we, we correct this, we can win the game. So it's it's both ways it can help you. You know, in talking to Matt uh, Viator, the offensive coordinator, I said, tell me something. Why have you guys, the last couple of games, you know, had slow first halves? And he said, I really can't tell you. But he said, because we've been at home, we've been able to come back. He said, we can't do that this week no. because we're not going to be at home. Although they have the lion's share of the crowd here tonight. Well, they do. They have a huge crowd here. Martin and Sam's the two deep men. That's Martin. You look into his eyes, and here's the kick. And he's going to return it from two yards deep in the end zone. Here comes a flag. That's a face mask run. Right there. So incidental five yards stepped off to the 28 yard line. And Ryan Corcoran a junior out of Lake Charles 6 to 198 pounds comes into the lineup. And Darvis will uh, will get a break on the, on this series anyway. Three of five, 15 yards. Trahan comes in at tailback, number three. He's a senior out of Sulphur. New quarterback in, new cadence, new uh, voice. Ten ball. Ball start on the offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Tommy Tate, uh, I'm sure he wants to settle his football team down. They've been hit with a punch here in the first half. Well, you look at the yardage, 137 to 41 in the first ball game. Pendarvis on the ball game is what, 11 to 13? And we got flags all over the place again. See, what's happening is Western Kentucky is moving their defensive line, and all of a sudden they may be using a signal. And you never know, move or whatever. And I'm sure that's what the offensive linemen are saying from McNeese. It sounds like our cadence. See, the linebacker is going to say, move. And then the defensive linemen move, and then all of a sudden the offensive buys move too. Well, the side judge has come over to talk uh, with uh, with Coach Tate, and uh, and I have a feeling that are the linesmen there. 
I have a feeling that that's exactly what uh, Tommy is talking to him about, just what Mike was saying. So, boy, two penalties right off the top here, and it's a first down and 20. Draw play, Trey Hand straight ahead. Going to take it out over the 25-yard line. Adrian Carson, what do you got for us? After the Hilltopper touchdown, Jack Harbaugh <laughs> looks over at me, winks, smiles, and says, we forgot Southern. Reference to Georgia Southern they played just a couple of days ago, Ron. And also reference to a question asked him yesterday on camera. I said, do you, are, are you concerned that you played your national championship game against that powerhouse Georgia Southern? And said, I hope not, but we'll find out in the first 10, 15 minutes of this ballgame. Well, Western has been deadly when they score first. 8-0 and on the season. But, of course, none of those uh, games that that happened was against McNeese. This ball tipped, almost intercepted, right in front of the McNeese bench. Carl Burtz was the man who was very tight on the coverage. Carl Burtz sat right on the flea right here. Flea Martin's going to break, but you see Carl Burtz, he's right there, almost picked that football off. Almost like he knew the route was going to be at 12 yards. Carl Burtz with two interceptions for the season. So with his third down, deep in the pocket this time to throw, pressure off the side, and the ball is tipped, and almost intercepted that is a nice defensive play by louder Drummond is the man who got a hand on the ball louder came over and almost made the pick three and out again uh, you also this lead Western Kentucky we talked about it if you can get ahead in this football game neither one of these two teams are great passing football teams to come back you wonder about Vic King's absence here for uh, McNeese, the running back. Well, you know, he went out early in that ball game, though, Mike, and they, they played extremely well with uh, both Prim and Trahan. In fact, Trahan seemed to have better success yeah. last week than, uh, than Prim did. I think we'll see more of Trahan here as we go along. Seems to be a little bit quicker first yeah, when, he, uh, when he gets the handoff. So there's a timeout after a 32-yard kick, 14 to nothing, Western Kentucky. Last night, Tony Romo, a quarterback for Eastern Illinois, won the Walter Payton Award for the Division I AA Player of the Year. Eddie Payton there to make the presentation as you look at uh, Tony Romo. This year he passed for 2,950 yards and 33 touchdowns. And our congratulations to that man on an outstanding performance. Ron, it's hard to go against uh, Western tonight because they got Santa on their side. He's wearing red. <laughs> The Cowboys uh, still got a lot of time to have something to say about that, about spoiling the 25th. Short drop. Pass is knocked away. Good nice coverage. defensive play by Keith Smith. And that's the young man who had that closing speed a moment ago you were talking about. He's a track guy, and he's their best cover man. Ron Shannon Hayes, who has 19 catches this year, was the intended receiver, but you can see Keith Smith right with him. I like the play calling Western. They're not a passing team, but not afraid to throw on first down. This will be a run. Odds are. <laughs> Second down to 10. And they give it straight ahead to the fullback. And Jeremy Johnson takes it out across the 45 to almost the 46 yard line. And it'll be third down. John Paul Jones is uh, the man down on the bottom of the stack and he was probably the defensive lineman that they worried most about taggart uh, the uh, co-offensive coordinator we just showed the walter payton award and he was the recipient of uh, of that award all right willie doing a good job calling plays uh, featuring jeremy johnson here in the first half 101 yards for Western rushing, 34 for McNeese. Blitz right up the middle, and he's going to have to eat this one, and that is Roderick Royal. Second time that they have gotten to him tonight. Transfer from Florida, Roderick Royal just came in unblocked to make this sack on Michael. 
Michael is lucky that he was able to hold yeah. on to the football. Good the observation, eighth, yeah. The eighth tackle of the night for Royal, we are told. What a first half he's having. Claiborne into punt. Now, McNeese had a block last week against Villanova, and they're coming after him. But it, and it's off the side of his foot. That is going to bound. No, they're not going to be able to return this one because it went straight out of bounds at around the 30-yard line. Well, Saturday, the top golfers from the PGA, LPGA, and Champions Tour battled for bragging rights. Jim Fury, Kari Webb, and Tom Kite head the field at the Wendy's Three Tour Challenge. Coverage begins Saturday at 4 Eastern on ABC. I can't say anything about golf, Ron. I can't add to that. <laughs> Don't know anything about it. No. Can't golf. Don't golf. Don't watch golf. Well, they fake the reverse. Trey Hand goes straight ahead. Pendarvis is back in the ball game, which makes one point. Coach Tate was not taking his starting quarterback no. out for and admonishing him. He said on the phone the other day that we play our number two quarterback and it comes at a certain time during the ball game and we'll do it again as the game goes on. <laughs> Marcus Trahan, Ron, number three, has got to get hot for McNeese. Going to get that middle screen, and there's Flea. Martin spins by two tacklers, and you better get him down or he's gone. Biggest gainer of the night for McNeese, a gain of 18 yards. Can you imagine how hard it is to tackle a Flea? But Carl Maslowski finds out right here as he tries to bring him down. He was there for a moment he just <laughs> when he reached for him, but he wasn't there at the end. Just gave him a dead leg. Kincaid is a man who finally got to him. Luke Lalton into the game at the blocking back. Here's Trahan, and he breaks it up the middle and almost breaks it all the way. And he takes it to the 35-yard line and a gain of 14. Reason I thought Trahan really has to get started here because he's the breakaway threat in the running game. He runs a toss sweep, but he runs it downhill. He'll take it inside of the action, a missed tackle, when he's in the secondary. But you're right, Ron. You talk about watching him on tape. He's faster, yeah. and he gives him a threat. Now here's Lawton. Bounces off one tackle, will not bounce off the second. And that is Maslowski, who obviously had his bell rung, but he's back in the game, and he's ringing bells now. <laughs> and he knocks down Luke Lawton, the junior out of Lafayette for let's see they're going to say about a two yard uh, loss on the play Andrew Roban number 34 now comes into the ball game at fullback he's a sophomore six feet 231 pounds Play action, got a man wide open, that's the tight end Hamilton, and he'll go inside the 30 and take it to the 26-yard line, a gain of 11. Now the continuity on the part of McNeese far, far more evident. You know, you, you might have hit a point there when Scott Pendarvis went to the sideline and uh, the second team quarterback came into the ball game. All of a sudden, you see the game a little different from the sideline. That may be what he needed in this football game to settle him down. Pendarvis. Real bad. A hit behind the line of scrimmage, and that's John Drummond who got penetration. And they're not going to have the first down. It's going to be fourth down and one. But with a 14 to nothing lead and uh, the position on the field, we all know, I yeah. think, that this is going to be gonna go, for go for it. it. Yeah. Their fullback, Luke Lawton, has never had an opportunity to get started in the two runs he's tried to run the football. Drummond has come off the corner and made the play. So it's fourth down. And they need one yard. They got Western to, uh, they got him off side with so that quick count. There's your first down. Didn't even have to run the play. Arthur Wilson, huge nose guard at uh, right at 300 pounds, and you can see contact is made. 
Arthur's wide, not too tall, six foot, 295. They got a lot of Coke machines on this team, too. <laughs> Western <laughs> Kentucky. First down, here comes the reverse. And here's Sands. And they run him right into the boundary and make the tackle. That is a nice play by Maslowski. And one thing that the coaches said about Maslowski, he is an old school guy who was so instinctive, but don't run him in the 40 because he probably doesn't run but a 4 9. But he. He watches so much film and is instinctive, and it's hard to fool him. I had so many guys when they, when they played for me, there were four four guys, but when they put the pads on, they became four eight. <laughs> had so many four nine guys that became four five when they put pads on because they had football. Short center. drop, quick pass over the middle, got it complete to Sands. Louder came up. If McNeese is going to win this football game. B.J. Sam's got to play a big part in this game. Runs a quick slant, gets the ball over the middle, takes the hit by Louder, and holds on to the football. Boy, Louder has had a couple of huge collisions already. Mike, the thing you got to be impressed with, Sam's and Martin, to be as small as they are, they go anywhere to catch the football, and they are not, they're not worried. Sam's two catches for 12. Fumble the snap and takes it forward maybe for about a yard. Coates came very close to knocking the ball out of his hand. Reynolds was there as well. They're going to go for the field goal, uh, I believe, at this point. So Marino, and looking at his numbers, his longest is 47. He is 12 of 20 this season. Kicking into a slight breeze, 31-yard attempt. He's got it. On the mic, I don't see a flag, but boy, there is a lot of discussion going on there in the middle. Drummond is the man who was jumping around. There's no no penalty. No, and but yet all the teams stayed out there, and McNeese is saying. They must be saying that there was contact made. And what Jack's arguing what about is what I talked about. I think what the Western Kentucky players are saying that the snapper is moving, moving the football. His, yeah, he's moving the football and his head. So we'll take a timeout. McNeese on the board, 14 to 3, our new score. So we are back, and you take a look at Jared Ferranti, who is uh, a backup center and also handles special teams, a senior out of uh, Houston, Texas, out of uh, Sci Falls. And looks like he's getting ready for the centennial. <laughs> <laughs> but he's been the action here in the first half. He's moving a little bit, but he's not moving the football. He's so uh, as That's long right. as he doesn't move the football, he's okay. Snap it. Here's the kick. This one is going to come down at the one yard line to Frazier. Frazier breaks it big over the middle and is going to take it out close to the 35 yard line. 33 yards on the return. Well, tomorrow at noon on ESPN2, it's the NCAA Division III Championship. Six-time champion of Mount Union has earned its sixth trip and its third straight to the Stag Bowl in the last seven years. They face Trinity, Texas. They're making their first Stag Bowl appearance Saturday at noon Eastern on ESPN2. Ron Mount Union sits in Alliance, Ohio, right in the Maslin, Canton, Akron, Youngstown area. They get a lot of good football players up there. Their, their numbers are incredible. Running play will take it to the 39 yard line. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you again. Ron, practically one and a half inches of rain here in Chattanooga over the last uh, 24 hours. And the significance of that is that you're going to see now 70, 75% of offense for both teams running between the hash marks because 
Both teams are hesitant to run outside the hashes. No uh, real crown on this field, but once you get outside the hash marks, really between the numbers, it really becomes mud. You need to remember, though, that uh, tomorrow is the first day of winter, and the field is in pretty good shape all, all, uh, all the way around. Yep. Yeah, you're right. The, the grounds crew has done a really nice job here in Chattanooga at this beautiful little stadium. Rodney Play bounces it outside. Frazier, and he's off and running again. This time they're going to catch him, but not before he takes it to the 31 yard line, a gain of 29. And Fairchild has had to make some come from behind tackles several times tonight. Yeah, that's Rufus Sanders right there. He's 6'8, 340 pounds. I, I guarantee he's more than 340. And then you got a 295 pound fullback leading that side. So. There's, they got some weight on their side. One of the things that Coach Taggart said earlier in the week that they have to be careful of, as you look at Big Rufus going to the sideline, he said that we tip our hand, we run to his side so often. But why not? He is such a huge fella. Hayes in motion. Here comes the option pass. Looking, still looking, going to throw deep. Got a man there. And incomplete that's incidental contact there their feet got tangled the Western fans want interference but that's not Keith Smith is the man who was uh, closest to the football Keith Smith again with good coverage against Reeves number two bumps him a little bit but uh, yeah, I think it's a good no call sport. don't you yeah. yeah here comes big Rufus in again the only thing I would change about Rufus is he should have a 78 on his back because <laughs> he's a tackle. Yeah, he's not a tight end. He, he's not going to catch. They're not going to throw the ball to him. Hey, Mike, when you when you arrive at the stadium, I'd make sure he's the first guy off the bus. Yeah, then Johnson oh, in the second. <laughs> oh, my. And then Johnson, you know, nope, they fake it to Johnson and the quarterback keeper, Jason Michael, Rod Gully, comes over to make the tackle. Gully has had a truly outstanding year. Number 10, a junior out of Newton, Texas. Nine interceptions on the season. Far and away, his uh, his best year. That was a read all the way by Jason Michael when he saw the defensive tackle come down on the fullback, Johnson. He pulled the ball out and kept it. Gully did not get to finish the first game between these two teams. He injured a knee and uh, had to, to stay on the sideline for the entire contest. Third down. They need the 21 and a half yard line and they give it to the big fullback Jeremy Johnson. And he is not going to have the first down as they make the stop at the 22. Fairchild with still another tackle. Yeah, Fairchild has been a very good player. He replaced the defensive MVP of the league last year, Joe Judge. Well, it looks as though Martinez is going to come on to attempt a field goal for Western. He, his longest is 49 yards. He is 16 of 23 on the season. As the clock runs, we're about to go under five minutes to play in this one double-A championship game in the first half. 40-yard attempt. Good pass, plenty of distance as you can see, and he knocks it right down the middle. So we'll take a timeout. New score, Western 17 to 3. Just under five minutes left until halftime. On ESPN Classic, tis the season for believing that miracles can come true. Hey, you believe in miracles? Yes! Starting Christmas Eve. Deck the halls with 35 hours of amazing comebacks and magical games. You better watch out. You better not cry. Classic is coming to town. Do you believe in miracles? Find out starting noon Eastern Christmas Eve only on ESPN Classic. Get ESPN Classic. Call your cable or satellite provider now. Last night here in Chattanooga on track 29, the Chattanooga Choo Choo. You know, Mike, this time last year, as we were watching video, uh, Adrian favored us with his rendition of. Let's go. Adrian, uh, Adrian hit it. Pardon me, Ron. Is that the Chattanooga <laughs> Choo Choo? Yeah. Track 29. Mike, you can give me a shine. <laughs> You're supposed to sing it. Not talk. You'll leave the Pennsylvania station about a quarter to four. Right. BJ Shams, number 12. One of the deep guys back with Jermaine Martin, number two. 
And one of the things that we're beginning to notice more and more of what Adrian has talked about and that is outside the hash marks as soon as the players come to the bench the managers are running over with brushes and screwdrivers and knocking the mud off their cleats. And you see they got the the rub mats out there. Martinez with the kick very returnable this one uh, is going to come to Martin and Martin hit immediately not going to make the 25 yard line. And you can see the celebrations on the part of the part of the special teams because they know full well that either one of those guys you make one error and uh, it's going to cost you six points because both of those return men can get it to the house in a hurry. Ron Sherrod Coates number 11 has 12 sacks if McNee starts to throw the football watch for number 11 to be right in the backfield. Sam's in motion Western comes with a blitz and they go with a handoff right up the middle as Prim has come back into the lineup and he's not going to have very much. Penn Darvis uh, we visited with him on the phone as Meslowski came over to uh, make the tackle and Penn Darvis made the observation and said what do you remember most about that uh, that first meeting he said we won with a lot more points than they did but he said they are a very physical football team and all of us took that away from the game yeah, they're very physical when you look at Western quick out pass gets that one in there Sam's and they get him in space and he goes out across the 35 yard line tackle made by Chandler Got a pretty good block by Britt Broadhead, number four, the other receiver. Gain of, I'm sorry. Go, go, when you throw the quick screen, you got to get a block. Right there's a block by Broadhead. Just long enough to pick up the first down. And you could see Coach, man, you were just talking about coming out of nowhere to make the tackle. It's a gain of nine. They fake the end around, and now they're going to go downfield, and it is incomplete. Chandler battling against Martin. They got tangled up too, Ron. Yeah. I think Western might have got away with one here. The flea is going to uh, fake and then take off. Yeah, I, I, I think it's good non-call. I'll tell you, look at Sam's as they were playing for that that uh, end around and he just got taken out of the play by Patrick Reynolds fleet <laughs> Sam's looking up at who hit me I'll tell you who hit him is a fella who has a brother who also is going to play for the national championship Patrick Reynolds uh, brother Robert plays strong linebacker for Ohio State Lineman downfield for McNeese, so they're going to still have first down. Or second down. 15 now. Now they come in with an extra wide receiver. Lawton comes to the sideline. That ball tipped and almost intercepted by Coates. Reese Davis, let's go back to the studio and check with you. All right, Ron, coming up at halftime, we have another seat filled on the coaching carousel, and Coach Curry and Coach Donovan will talk about the best way to handle a coaching departure. It's also championship weekend in the NCAA. Coach Curry claims to have been a great spiker in volleyball, and we'll even talk a little volleyball, and we'll also look ahead to a much more serious subject, the Seminole Affairs and the latest on the Florida State situation involving Adrian McPherson. Okay, Reese, thanks very much. We'll be to you in three minutes and 44 seconds. Quick out pass, and they got it complete to Sams. Sams gets by one, now two, and they finally get him down at the 41-yard line. Louder was able to bring him to the turf after a gain of nine. Ron, almost the same situation. Britt Broadhead again with a key block to spring Sams for another couple yards. Talk about an unselfish player. Now he didn't block. He just missed him. <laughs> but he's still unselfish. Maybe it was the intent. But the intent was there, I'm telling you. Third down and six to keep this drive going. They need to take it out to the 47-yard line. From the shotgun. And Darvis gets this one complete to Sams. Gets by one tackler. And on the second effort, he will have the first down. 
that play, we might need to put an asterisk by it because if McNeese is able to go down and get points, that is a huge one right there. Now, B.J. Sams, we talked about it at the beginning. He has got to make plays. Missed tackle by coach number 11, and that allowed Sams to get to first down. Sams now five catches for 37 yards. From under center this time, play action. Now here comes the pressure, and Coates is going to sack him. First time that they have gotten to either of the McNeese quarterbacks. Clock continues to run as we hit two and a half minutes left until halftime. That's the 13th sack by Coates. Number 11 keeps off the corner, was being blocked by Prim, number 22. Didn't go to didn't do a good job of staying with Coates. Two-time all-conference is Coates, and here comes a draw play. Prim hit in the backfield, gets by the first man, and then, wow, he gets whacked at the 42-yard line. Some kind of hit by Drummond. Kincaid also out there to help out on the stop. B.J. Sams coming back into the lineup. I was going to say, McNeese has all three timeouts left. Have not led at halftime the Cowboys in the playoffs. So their second half football team. Stay tuned. Blitz right up the middle. Pendarvis as the flag goes down, and this is going to be well overthrown. Martin, the intended receiver. You have to wonder, Coach Tate. Illegal motion on the offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. You have to wonder if uh, what Tommy's not going to say at halftime is, you know, we just we're not playing. We're not focused. We're not playing our kind of football because. McNeese has not made these kind of mistakes, Mike. Right? I'll tell you what he's going to do. He's going to bring that graphic up that Bill Bunnell just put up there that we're a second half team. We've come back in both our playoff games and we're going to come back in this one. That's going to be his halftime speech. We did it before and we'll do it again. Here's the kick. They almost got to that thing. Driving spiral. And taken by Beals at the nine yard line. And he is going to be stopped shy of the 20 yard line. 49 on the kick and eight on the return. We'll take a timeout. 115 left until halftime. Well, some happy hilltoppers as Western with 115 showing on the clock until halftime. Leading in this 1AA national championship game 17 to 3. I don't think you'll see Western take a chance here. But they'll try to get some, maybe a draw or a screen or get some type of run. If they pick up 10, 15 yards, then they may go into a scoring mode. But they're not, they've got the lead and they're going to take us to halftime. You know, they've got two tight ends and an eye formation. And they put it in the stomach of the tailback, and Frazier, they're going to call a quick timeout. That didn't take very long. Six seconds to be exact. John Paul Jones came up to uh, stuff the play. Yeah, what Tommy Tate saying now, as you look at Western Kentucky, 10-0 when leading at halftime this season. Jack Harbaugh and his coaching staff doing a great job at halftime. But what Tommy Tate's still figuring now, he's got two timeouts left. He's going to make Western punt this football if they can't get a first down. And then, like you said, they blocked a kick yep, sure uh, did. last week. Go after one, see if I can get something positive before halftime. Frazier's numbers, quite an outstanding evening. 10 carries, 115 yards, and the one long 55-yard touchdown run. Over on the sideline, Claiborne loosening the leg. You, you, you just gave the numbers of Frazier, 110 yards. He's averaging 102 rushing in the playoffs, so he's exceeded that in the first half. So here comes second down. 
Where's the big guy at? There he is. There he is. There's two Giants. Two tight ends. I formation again. And they run it right up the middle. Good burst of speed to the 24 is the tailback Frazier. Garrison came over to make the tackle. I've not, I've not seen many bigger tight ends than Rufus. Watch Rufus here. He's blocking number 94, Zeno. Zeno got caught on a double team with one of them being Rufus. Those are not good odds, Mike. R Rufus is a whisper in, the, in his ear right now. Jarrell, you need to be a little bit bigger. I'm 340, really 370, and you're 237, so I have an advantage over you. So McNeese used that second time out. They have one more remaining. I know Western Kentucky has great basketball history. I think I'd get Rufus up for basketball. <laughs> Be my designated pick guy. I, I think, you know, one point to make is he would be really good under the boards, Mike. There, there's where he is. I say he was 340, but he's more than that now. Mike, he'd be great under the boards, but I'm not sure if you got into a fast break situation. <laughs> that big he just stayed down there. <laughs> we'll play any defense. Third down. They need to take this to the 28-yard line. And here comes the option. As a string it out, there goes the pitch. The ball is on the ground, and I believe that Jason Michael, no, he did not. Turnover, and McNeese comes up with the football. Recovered by Chris White, the sophomore out of Lake Charles. First turnover in the playoffs for Western Kentucky, and I know Jack Harbaugh did not want that to happen. Now. On the other side, I got to give Tommy Tate credit uh, from McNeese because he used his timeouts wisely, got this ball back, and still has one timeout left, I believe. And I mean, he made that recovery inches from the sideline. First turnover in the playoffs, as Mike Godfrey said. Let's see if the Cowboys can turn this first turnover into gold. There's Sam's right there. You know he's going to be a guy they're going to look Blitz for. Blitz right up the middle, and this pass just thrown away because of Maslowski coming right up the middle. In Western Kentucky, when the sudden change, they're going to come after you. Maslowski's had a pretty good first half. He really has. I'll tell you. He has had a, a great first half and also Royal. What did he, we had yeah. Royal for eight tackles for him and Maslowski an interception and five tackles. Swings it out in the flat. They better get on that. Nope, they're going to say incomplete pass. The linesman is right there. Ron, I, I two plays. I know the blitz on the first play, but Sam's is your guy. He's the guy you got to get the football to. He can make so much happen. Now let's see if they do it here on third down. Third down and 10. Clock shows 46 seconds left until halftime. Well, this would be a big, big momentum for Western Kentucky if they can stop him. Swing. Now Western shows blitz, and here they come. They pick it up and in the flat, the fullback, and someone blew a coverage, and Luke will have the first down. You can hear him going, Lou, down below. Luke Lawton, gain of 14 yards. Boy, Scott Pendarvis with a great job there. He knew the blitz was coming. The inside linebacker got caught inside. A man coverage. The, the backer's right here to cover him. Zone blitz, John Drummond uh, couldn't get outside on Lawton fast enough. Good play call at the line of scrimmage by Pendarvis. So from the 12-yard line, it is now first down for McNeese, trying to claw their way back in. They're ranked number one in the country, but they're down 17-3. to There's a flag, and this play is going to go for knock. It is knocked down back at the 19-yard line. I think there was movement yeah. on McNeese. Yeah, there Looked was. Looked like they came off like a typewriter. No, they're good. They're saying it's on Western. They're going to say offside on Western. So what a huge break McNeese is going to get here because the ball would have been back at the 19 yard line. There it is right there. That's Middle guard Arthur again. Wilson. 
Mm -hmm. Arthur's been fast to the uh, races twice tonight. On the defense, five yard penalty, still first down. Still one timeout with 34 seconds left for McNeese. Now let's see what they come up with. Sams comes out in the slot to the left side, joining Martin. And the handoff right at the middle, hit at the line of scrimmage, and I mean Trahan just got nothing. Now he got have killed. To use that timeout too. Odorinde is there to make the stop, and they do. They use that final timeout. Uterinde. <laughs> Ron McNeese was trying to <laughs> cross him up because they figured they may think Western Kentucky that Tommy Tate's team was going to throw the football. But they tried to sneak a run in. Now they got to throw the football. No timeouts left. And 20, they got to be real smart here. 22 seconds. So Mike, how do you get the ball to one of those two outside guys? I think posts or corner routes right here, you want to throw the ball into the end zone. Now, you still have time with 22 seconds to get lined up. If you catch the ball on the one-yard line, you still got time to get set. So uh, you practice this. This is the uh, last week of the season. You ought to be the best you're going to be at this right now in the last 22 seconds. Well, remember this one thing, Mike. Right? They can stop the clock on a first down. Oh, I mean, right. just briefly. One yard line. They can pick up the first down at the one. See what they come up with. Again, those two wide receivers come to the left. And from the shotgun, Pendarvis zings it right over the middle, and that ball was almost picked off. That was the post. They had a broad Mas head on the post. Maslowski almost got to that football. Almost picked off. You're exactly right. So there's 18 seconds left. It is third down for McNeese. Here comes pressure. Now just going to throw this one away. And it is going to be fourth down with 11 seconds showing on the clock. Great job by Western Kentucky's defense. David Elson, the defensive coordinator, really came up key here with this series. Well, he's young. Yeah. <laughs> Be a coordinator. He's going to get old fast, though, <laughs> on those uh, sudden changes. So Marino to attempt the field goal. This is an attempt of 24 yards. Good pass, and he knocks it right down the middle. Of so the clock stops. Well, actually, clock should not have run. And seven seconds showing on the clock. Now what you do if you're McNeese, you build on that three points. You'd like to add seven, but you still build on the three. You got David Elson's going to build on what they did a great job once they get into the red zone. Jack Harbaugh's got to feel very good about getting away with only three points being scored. Oh, and particularly as potent as McNeese has been and to have gotten the ball as deep as they did. Remind the fans now, McNeese is a second half football team. Stay tuned. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, the Cowboy fans. A lot of them up here from the state of Louisiana and the Hilltopper fans across the way bundled up and they've had a lot more to cheer about in the first half. We'll see if McNeese can make their magic work in the second half of this ball game. as Villanova had dominated in the first half last week. One of your tickets. <laughs> yeah, I, it's a good thing he's not got a longer name than Pokes. Go Pokes. Didn't have much headroom there. So here's the kick. Going to come down to Veals. And he'll take it out to the 36, the 37 yard line. And the clock shows one tick on it. 
17 to 6. Reese Davis and company standing by back at the uh, studio. to Frazier and that'll be the final play of the first half. And let's go down to the sideline and Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Coach offensively you get a break here you get a break there but you can't convert. No they're playing very good on defense. Their four linebackers are very active and they're rushing the football and they're running some clock on us. We got to really do a good job of really stopping the running game and try to get more possessions offensively and try to get something going. What do you have to do now to take control of this game in the second half? You're a second half team. Yeah, defensively, we just got to stop the running game. We really got to get our offense the ball in good field position and we got to be able to block their linebackers and make something happen with our speed guys. Appreciate your time, coach. Ron Franklin. Okay, thanks. Adrian, 17 to 6. Western leads at halftime. And now here's Reese Davis with Bill Curry and Jim Donnan and the Cottage Game Day halftime report. Ron, thank you very much. 17 6. But McNeese State, as the guys mentioned, coming back. They had a 32 7 advantage in the second half last week against Villanova to move into this game. And Jim, you felt like that McNeese State started out a little bit tight. Well, we talked about it in the opening. Now, you're not playing the same football team you played back in September. And realistically, I think the, the three things they've done, Western, they've done a great job running their option attack to mix in with their power game, and they've also blended in some tremendous misdirection passes. Uh, conversely, they've done a great job rushing the passer with their blitzes, and I know, Coach Curry, you're going to come out with a good uh, second-half adjustment for them. Yeah, I think they will, um, they will adjust, but what's happened is McNeese thought that this was going to be easy, and they got knocked around a little bit. Now McNeese's offensive line has adjusted to the slant defense, the old Michigan slant. You heard Mike Godfrey talk about it, and they're not getting all that penetration, and they're getting something going. And, and I noticed, too, that Western, when they went up 14 to nothing, lost a little edge. And remember the name Carl Maslowski. He's the spiritual leader. He makes tackles. He's all over the field. They do need to keep that guy on the field. He's the one that reignites that defense. And for them to get the stop after the turnover right before the half was very big. But McNeese will come back out with, uh, with their teeth gritted understanding this is going to be a real test. See how you can twist that during the halftime speech. Hey, guys, we got a field goal at the end to try to get a little momentum. Or, as you said, we stopped them from getting a touchdown. We continue on the halftime report, the latest on Adrian McPherson, his situation in Florida State, and the gambling investigation. John L. Smith headed to Michigan State. What's the best way to leave and take a new job? Carl Durrell knows that's a good way. Reese Davis, Bill Curry, Jim Donnan back at the half. Western Kentucky's already beaten the number three seed, the number two seed in the playoffs, and they're up by 11 on the number one seed, McNeese State. Well, the coaching carousel continues to spin, and Florida is now looking for a new defensive coordinator because East Carolina has found its new head coach, John Thompson, the well-traveled defensive coordinator. He's been at Southern Mississippi, Arkansas, and Florida, among other places. Takes over for Steve Logan, departed from East Carolina. Thompson's been an assistant for 21 years, including a little bit of time on Coach Curry's staff. And the L and John L. Smith is no longer for Louisville, but maybe for Lansing, since he's the boss in East Lansing now. Smith leaving the Cardinals. The news broke during the GMAC Bowl and headed up to Michigan State and trying to write that program which is filled with talent, but had a really disappointing season. And really, John L. Smith, if you look at his resume, this is the type of guy who has turned programs around. Utah State and Louisville, the bowl appearances, five of those coming at Louisville in the 80 years before Smith arrived on the scene in Kentucky. The Louisville Cardinals had been to five bowl games in 80 years. So John L. Smith is the man at Michigan State. Carl Durrell got the perfect 39th birthday present on Wednesday. He got the UCLA job, the former Bruin wide receiver going back to his alma mater to take over. Been an offensive coordinator for Rick Neuheisel at both Colorado and Washington in the last three years. Had been at Denver with the Broncos, coaching wide receivers, a highly regarded coach, and becoming the fourth African-American to get a head coaching job 
in Division 1A. Of course, there are still some jobs open, and since there are jobs open, that means guys are going to be moving. And really in this offseason, guys, I think we've had some some odd situations from coaches departing from the abrupt departure of Dennis Franchoni at Alabama. The guy replacing him, Mike Price, is going back for an encore to coach another game at Washington State. And John L. Smith was somewhere in the middle. He kind of left at halftime of the GMAC Bowl when the news started <laughs> leaking out. What is the best? These things are going to happen. Nobody's going to be thrilled, or certainly everybody's not going to be thrilled when they do. What's the best way to handle this to make it as professional and as smooth as possible? Well, right off the bat, you got to make sure that you tell your president and your athletic director what's going on. There can't be any secrets about this. You can't find out on national television that your coach is getting ready to go to the Michigan State Spartans. Uh, obviously, there was some uh, conversation before the halftime of that game with uh, John L. Smith. Uh, he had to be talking to somebody, Bill, early on about that, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I think there are, there are contacts made with agents, and this way the, the coach says, well, I haven't talked to anybody, but there are three distinct cases and methods of leaving that we've seen. One in Mike Price who told his players, told the president, told the world, I want to go to Alabama. Then he got the offer. He took it. But he also said, I want to coach in the Rose Bowl. The second one is that Dennis Francione just took off. He didn't meet with his players. I don't understand that. I'm sure Dennis has an explanation. The third is somewhere in between, like you said, Jim, and John L. apologized. We were on the radio with him this morning. He said, hey, that was bad. I apologize to my players. It should have been handled differently. Well, he had no idea this was going to come out, but we're in the world of the Internet. You're going to find out things <laughs> every day that you wouldn't uh, normally find out 10 years ago. And I really believe that the bottom line is, hey, let's keep everything out front and let's go for it uh, in the right way. Do it the right way. Talk to your president. Talk to your AD. And uh, let's keep it all in the now, front. Somebody's posting on the Internet right now about what you guys just said. By the way, Jeff Tedford's not going anywhere. He's staying at Cal. He got a five-year extension. been flirting with Kentucky, or maybe Kentucky had been flirting with him a little bit. We will continue on the College Game Day Halftime Report. Michael finding big Jeremy Johnson, the former Hoosier, rumbling in for the Hilltoppers, and they're up by 11. Back on the College Game Day Halftime Report, Western Kentucky on top of McNeese State by a count of 17 to 6. Well, Nebraska has a new athletic director. It's a familiar face, Steve Peterson, coming over from Pittsburgh. He was in the Nebraska administration in the mid-90s, did a great job at Pitt with facilities and the like. He takes over for Bill Byrne, who went to Texas A&M. The Florida State Gambling Investigation centers on Adrian McPherson and no other Seminole player, according to a university spokesman who was responding to reports and rumors that perhaps some other Seminoles were involved in this investigation that's going on right now. As for McPherson, his lawyer flatly denies that his client has ever bet on sports. Don't forget, much more coming up on the family of networks here on ESPN2. Arizona and LSU, some college hoop. No Luke Walton in that game, but Luke Walton, because he's injured, is going to get an opportunity to walk with his graduating class at the University of Arizona. And Wildcats will try to reward him by beating LSU on the road then. 10 o'clock Eastern time, Gene Cady and the Boilers against Rob Evans and the Sun Devils, 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Some college hoop for you on Saturday. When we come back, we will talk more championship here on the College Game Day Halftime Report. There's a little more spring in the step of the Hilltopper Band because their ball club, 11 up and 30 minutes away from a title. Jack Harbaugh's Hilltoppers on top of the number one team in the land, 17-6. We're at halftime of the 1AA championship game here on ESPN2. Glad to have you with us as we continue on a championship weekend for the fall portion of the NCAA sports schedule. And that will include the Division Three National Championship tomorrow, the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl. When you look at Trinity and Mount Union, their senior classes combined 99-7. and seven. Win number 100 will bring somebody a national title. Jeff Hollinger will be on the scene to call it for us. We are in Salem, Virginia, outside of Roanoke for the 30th annual Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl, the Division III National Championship. It will be Mount Union of Ohio against Trinity of Texas. 
And Mountain Union is the defending champion. They have won 41 in a row. They've only lost one game since 1995. Their head coach, Larry Karras, says it's not easy being the prohibitive favorite. The way we deal with it is to just not deal with it. Uh, study the other team for what they are. Respect our opponents for the fact that they can beat us. And if you really concentrate on what can cause you to lose and try to prevent those things, you don't have time to worry about whether you're the favorite or the underdog. Joined now by Todd Christensen, and Mountain Union is, of course, the prohibitive favorite. But it gets particularly difficult for Trinity because their star quarterback, Roy Hampton, has been suspended. He will not be playing in this championship game. Well, certainly when you lose 43 touchdown passes and over 4,000 yards, that is a problem. For backup quarterback Dan DePlain, the cupboard is hardly bare. Behind him, running back Jeremy Boyce has rushed for over 1,400 yards. And on the outside, he has Jeremy Urban and Jason Hunt, who have combined for 165 catches, nearly 2,500 yards, and 20 touchdowns. So the idea coming into this game, get the ball to JQ. <laughs> Both of these teams are undefeated. Trinity is 14-0. Mount Union is 13-0. And some more numbers to pass along to you. The Purple Raiders of Mount Union are 6-0 in these championship games. We'll see you from Salem tomorrow. Jeff, Todd, thank you very much. And that's not the end of the hardware to be claimed. There's also a women's volleyball title up for grabs. And Chris Marlowe and Heather Cox will be ready to call the Stanford-USC game for us. You know, it's extremely rare when you get to see the greatest player ever in any given sport. Well, that's what's going to happen when you tune in to the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship between Stanford and USC. Logan Tom on display, the greatest female collegiate volleyball player of all time. Heather, in football terms, tell the audience why Logan is so great. Well, Logan Tom is a little bit of Carson Palmer. You throw in well, some Willis McGahee, some Ken Dorsey, and you have got one complete player. She is one of a kind. Her six kills per game are a lot like Larry Johnson rushing for over 200 yards every single time he takes the field. Yes, sir. Logan Tom is the big star in this match. Stanford is the defending national champion. But if you're talking about one of the great teams in the country and the number one seed in the tournament, the big favorite, you're talking about USC. Well, USC is really the Miami. They've been the undisputed number one all season long. And no, USC does not have Larry Coker. But what it does have is Mick Haley. The former Olympic coach says that this just may be the best ever volleyball team he's seen in the modern era. All right, our matchup is set. Two heavyweight contenders. We've got USC, number one rank, going against the defending national champions. The kickoff, whoop, the first serve is going to be at 3.30 Eastern. Back to you. Chris, Heather, thank you very much. I'm ready to cast a Heisman vote for Logan Tom after hearing Heather comparing all those football players. I know you want to talk about your glory days as a spiker at College Park High. Well, let's talk about the Division III football game instead and what Mount Union has done. Dynasty doesn't even begin to describe it. It was College Park phys ed in oh, the eighth grade, me. and I was the spike E. Okay. <laughs> Mount Union's record, and to try to fathom this, since 1990, the record is 161 wins, seven losses, one tie. Coach Larry Karras, one of the most humble, one of the most uh, together human beings that I've ever met. I had the privilege of working with him on American Football Coaches Association, what's called the Coaching Bible. And the basis of the Mount Union program is unselfishness and preparing for life and preparing for every part of what football presents. And his teams are always ready. Only one time since I got in this business have I gone and stood outside a locker room to meet a team. And it was when Mount Union won the national championship division three title in 1997. I just wanted to meet those players and Coach Karras. It'll be great to watch them play tomorrow. And Trinity's put together an offensive juggernaut too, Jim. Well, they really have, and I believe as a football coach, you always got to get your second guy ready. And certainly Dan Desplaines is going to have a chance tomorrow on national television to go against one of the great football teams and dynasties in history. Uh, every time you uh, get ready for a big game, you got to have an edge, and they're going to have to do something different without Roy Hamilton. You just can't replace 4,000 you know, 4,000 yards passing, that's unbelievable. People don't do that in the backyard. Yeah, Hampton's been dismissed from the team because of a public intoxication charge that happened after Trinity won its semifinal game. I mean, you think about Mount Union, you mentioned those stats, and they are hard to fathom. And you look at the most successful team since 1990. Mount Union, as Bill mentioned, 161 wins. That's great. They've won 18 more games than Marshall has, and Marshall, uh, you were responsible for a lot of those, Jim, but, but Karras, uh, he's got an edge on He's got an edge on the Thundering Herd there. It's been a good run for both teams. Hey, two good teams. I'd like to play them. <laughs> <laughs> Mount Union and Trinity at high noon on ESPN2, the Division Three Football Championship, the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl, and then 
3.30 Eastern time, it'll be the Cardinal and the Trojans, a little Pac-10 battle, as you might expect, at women's volleyball for the national championship. That's all coming here home for NCAA championships, the ESPN family of networks. John Frazier, the senior from Central City, Kentucky, 125 yards in the first half. The toppers are on top. Second half's coming. So the score at halftime for the 1AA National Championship, 17-6 Western Kentucky on top. And Mike Gottfried, uh, kind of eavesdrop for us uh, of what you think went on in the two respective locker rooms, particularly McNeese. I think McNeese is saying we've been in this position before. we got to come out here and do our thing. And I think back on uh, both these teams. They started in last December, the winter program. And one of these teams is going to walk away with a championship in 30 minutes. So both teams said, hey, we got to do the best we can here for Western Kentucky. Hold on and, and get more points. And for McNeese, they've got to prove they're a second half team once more. Well, that is the position that they have found themselves in in all their playoff games. <clears throat> and that they obviously have been able to overcome that. That's the reason they're here. So here comes the kick, and this one is going to be in the field of play and returnable. This is Martin. And Flea will take it right up the middle, and he gets punished pretty good as he crosses the 20. Adrian Carson, let's check with you down on the sideline. Words from head coach uh, Jack Harbar for Western Kentucky. Yes, on one hand, we are 30 minutes, as Mike says, away from a national championship. But on the other hand, some words of warning. When they face these guys, the same McNeese team um, back on September 28th, they came out, the Cowboys did, and scored four touchdowns in their first five possessions of the second half, hence this whole moniker of the second half team. Jack says we have to play our game, do our thing. That is pound the ball, Ron. And of course, from the beginning of this year, their motto was finish. Because last year they had opportunities and they didn't finish when they led late in the ball game. Trahan gets the carry and they will go for short yardage. Let's take a look at the first half stats. When you look, what sticks out right here is 145 rushing. That's what Western Kentucky does. And, and McNeese only gives up 117. So they're already over that in the first half. They got to slow them down in the second half. Well, in case you joined us late, an interception early by the Hilltoppers as this running play by Trahan is going to go with a good second effort out for the first down, tackled by Chandler. But Western hit him with a, a couple of good shots early on. Now we're going to find out if McNeese can do their magic again. Ron, a toss sweep by Trahan. He bounces it outside. Got some good blocking on the right side of the line. Mitch Sawyer, the guard, pulled out. It led Trahan. But Trahan and Sams got to get it done here for him. They go with the fullback and Luke Lawton on the, the quick handoff will have a gain of five and tackled by Drummond. You know, it's amazing football teams when they go into the locker room at halftime and the rallying cry has been, we've been here before. Now we know how to act. We know if we can take this ball right out here and score a touchdown, that will send a message to Western that, hey, we're we're right where we want to be. Well, here they come with the end of round, and this is Sams, and he is going to be grabbed and thrown hard to the turf by Charles Thompson. Wow, the big sophomore out of Louisville just grabbed him with the shoulder pads and uh, and flung him down. So it's going to be third down. Third down, and they need about two yards to pick up the first down. And here in the city of trains. You talk about derailing something, what a huge stop this would be for the Hilltoppers if they can keep them three and out. The pitch, and I don't think he got it, Mike. It's the tackle is made at the 46-yard line by Charles Thompson. They have picked up one first down on this opening of the second half offensive series. But right here, it's going to be fourth down, and from the near sideline, the punting unit comes on. Charles Thompson, as you said, the leading tackler in this football team, comes across and makes this play on the run and keeps it from being a first down. What happened was Jason Davis missed the block on Thompson. Oh, they got the return on this one and a horrible kick off the side of his foot. 
That's going to bound inside the 35. They're right there, as you can see, with coverage and touch dead at the 28-yard line. 26 yards on the kick. Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey to Adrian Karsten, coming to you from Chattanooga, Tennessee, site of the 1AA National Championship. We were here last year as Montana won it over Furman, and tonight, the number one ranked team in 1AA, McNeese, trying to carry home the trophy. But 15th ranked Western Kentucky being a very stubborn opponent up to this juncture. Same starting backfield, Johnson at fullback and Frazier at tailback. And the pitch back comes to Frazier. And as he turns the corner, the 35 is going to be shoved out of bounds. And that is very close to a 10-yard gain on the play. Fairchild with the tackle. If John Frazier in the first half got loose uh, for this football team on the toss sweep, broke in the secondary for a score. Here's the touchdown right here. Ran Keith Smith, the cornerback, to the end zone. And they come right out and get 10 yards on the first play on an option play. Now they're going to have to bring the chains all the way across the field to measure and see if the Hilltoppers did pick up a first down to open their first offensive possession of the second half. He got it. Always felt like the first drive in the third quarter sends a message in Western Kentucky. We talked about Tommy Tate's team sending the message. Well, Western stopped them. Now, if you can take this football down and score some points, get something out of this. Casey Rooney checks in late at wide receiver. And he lines up out to the right to the bottom of your screen. Got the big guy on this side. See if they go that way. Matt Rogers in motion. One of the tight ends, and they go option to the open side of the field. And a pitch and a hit, and what a great defensive play by Rod Gully. <laughs> Rod Gully's the best center fielder in Division I AA. <laughs> Fifth on the team in tackles, has nine interceptions, and fills the alley on the option to make the tackle on Frazier for a loss. He's got four tackles in tonight's ball game, And now it's going to be a second down and 12. Anytime you play the option run, your safety's got to play well. Blitz comes off the corner. It's picked up, pass over the middle is caught at the 45, and that is Jeremy Johnson, the fullback, and 275 pounds is rumbling and bumbling down the sideline, and it is going to be a first down at the 14-yard line. 49 yards. What a key pass from Jason Michael to the big transfer from Indiana. Jack Harbaugh told me when he arrived at Western Kentucky from Indiana, who was out of shape, and they've got him in shape now, and uh, the big fullback's going to go high in the draft. I'll tell you what, Roderick Royal, who's had such an outstanding game, and Royal is big at 241, he couldn't get him to come down, and finally White just had to push him out of bounds. That is a career-long reception for Jeremy Johnson, who started the game tonight with stomach virus. Tanned by, and they go straight ahead, wide open, and into the end zone is John Frazier for his second touchdown of the night, and Brock Baker, number 30, with a key block on the touchdown run. Ron, I think that is a big nail in this uh, coffin. A lot of time left with 11.03, but that sends the message that Western Kentucky knows they're a comeback football team. Jack Harbaugh looking on as Martinez tries to make it a 24-6 ball game. And he does. A couple of 
plays tonight that I have a feeling they have not run earlier this year have really paid off, and they've both been to Johnson. We'll take a timeout. Western on top. It's the most wonderful week of the year. There'll be tailgater hostings, kielbasas for roastings with people you don't even know. There'll be Hail Mary stories and tales of the glories of bowl games from long, long ago. It's the most wonderful week. Capital One Bowl Week, December 23rd through January 1st on ESPN and ESPN2. Well, how many times have you seen a sign on somebody's bumper that says, See Rock City? Well, you're lucky to Chattanooga from Rock City. Gorgeous sight here on what has turned into a clear evening. Very rainy and ugly last night. Thank goodness the ball game is tonight. And for Western, the full moon is shining on them right now, although there's still 11.03 left to play in the third quarter. But the Hilltoppers now on top, 24-6. to six. Sams and Martin, the two deep men, and this is going to come down to Sams at the five. And trying to get outside, and he almost does as he shoved out of bounds at around the 30-yard line. Watch this replay, Ron. Joe Washington and Chris Price are going to double right there, and then you're going to get the pulling guard here, Gervais. Watch how they pancake the defensive tackle and open up that hole. Now, Joe Washington is 6'3", 340. Price is an All-American guard at 6 foot 290. Gervais is 300 pounds pulling. That's a big offensive line. And they're playing without one of their really good ones up there because of injury. Yeah, Kevin Leitner does a nice job with that offensive line coaching. Play action, gets his ball wide open. And that's Martin, and he got tagged pretty good on that one, knocking him down as Antonio Veals, and it's a gain of 17 yards. Flea's going to run a crossing route, and watch him, the hit he takes from Veals. Little guy spinning around there trying to pick up yardage. I don't, I don't blame him. Part of that yeah. might have been his radar. He felt two Light. other guys coming after him. So get on the ground and, and uh, get what you can. Lightning in the bottle. Trey Hand right at the middle. Big opening. Has five, has ten, and counted off at about 13 yards on the run. Coach. Talk, talked about Western Kentucky's offensive line. Watch. McNeese come off the ball and open the hole for Trey Hand to cut backside. LeBlanc, 300 pounds. Hudler, 304. Davis, 332. They got some size up front, too. Trey Hand now, right? Mike has eight carries for 52 yards. Quick out pass, and oh boy, Sands just got obliterated by Jeremy Chandler. And you can see that Western Kentucky has worked on that play more than once this week. Ron, Western Kentucky is a very well-coached football team in all phases of the game. They tackle real well, too. But they jump up on this quick screen, and, and he's right there to make the play. David Elson uh, with a good game plan for the Cowboys. Seventh season, he is the defensive backs coach. Second down and uh, going to be dropped for a loss. I'm not sure if it was a quarterback draw, if he saw the pressure or what, but Thompson is there to destroy the whole thing. I think it was a quarterback draw on it. And David Elson dialed up the right defense because he brought both linebackers. And Charles Thompson's right in there in the backfield with Coates. Third down has not been a good down. Third for down McNeese. and 16. They need to take this all the way down to the 29-yard line. Pressure off the corners, right over the middle, and in and out of the hands of Sams. And that's a couple tonight that Sams has had hit him in the hands and didn't hold on to it. Yeah, he can't throw it much better than that. Scott Pendarvis really did a good job there. Coates coming from the outside. McNeese does a good job of chopping him. 
And here's the throw to Sams. Just didn't bring it in. Here's the problem when you kick the Western, they run the ball so well. They take time. Cook with the punt. And this one is off the side of his foot. Both of these uh, punters, the last couple have uh, have had some problems. So let's take a timeout. 839 left in the third quarter after an 18-yard punt. We'll be right back. Sam's on the sideline. His ball club down 24 to 6. And a quick reminder, Saturday night it's college basketball on ESPN and ESPN 2 at 5.30. Number 10, Missouri, goes up against the Fighting Illini for the Bragg and Rights game. And at 8 o'clock on ESPN 2, number one ranked Arizona faces off with LSU. So the Hilltoppers on offense for the second time in the second half. They scored the first time they had the football. Michael sets in the pocket. Going to go long, and that ball is caught right in front of the McNeese bench, and it's drawn in by Shannon Hayes. 20 yards on the pass play. What Western Kentucky's doing a lot of here in the third quarter is an end over uh, formation where they only have to tackle on the back side. There's a tackle. Now the tight end is on this side, both receivers on this side. They are having success with this against McNeese. From the 48, they go right back to the run. And after faking to the fullback, Jason Michael will take it into the line of scrimmage and tackled at the 49. Last drive for Western Kentucky was two big plays. The big fullback Johnson with the catch and then the missed tackles. Nobody could bring him down. And then John Frazier with a good blocking back by his fullback in the tight end for the Sanders in the end zone. You know, Mike, both of those passes that they've thrown to Johnson tonight, the one at the sideline back in the very first quarter, and that one, uh, representatives from uh, Western Kentucky told us during the timeout they haven't thrown either one of those pass plays to Johnson this entire season. Well, they New saved stuff. them for the right time. Boy, they did. Option play and a pitch is going to go for short yardage. Uh, Casey Rooney is the man who was out there as the fellow to receive the pitch, and it's Rod Gully. That uh, Mike made the comment, your safeties have got to be good against the option. And Gully was up there and uh, was up to the task. So it's going to be third down, and they need to take it to the 42. Frazier, Mike, I think we need to get Adrian to take a look. I think he limped off the yeah, field. It looks like his leg is bothering him. Right leg, maybe. This time they roll the pocket. And he's going to be sacked by Jim Abram. They were trying to go deep, trying to get the ball to Jerome Reeves, who was a big receiver. But there was double coverage on him, and then good pressure from inside. And Jason Michael had no place to go as Abram was all over. And he didn't make a mistake, O'Ron. He didn't try to throw the ball. He just took the sack. He got the big lead, 18-point lead. Don't do anything foolish. Cameron waiting for the snap. They were coming after him, and this one's off the side of his foot. And both of these punters are getting rushed a little bit, and. The last four have not been real picturesque. We'll take a timeout. Western 24 to 6. I have to focus, gather everything I've learned, all my successes, all my sacrifices, all my pain, and concentrate that energy into one moment. Ah! That's a moment I'll use every single day of my life. <gasps> There are 360,000 NCAA student athletes, and just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. So John Frazier being checked over on the sideline, and they're looking at that right knee.
205 all-purpose yards, two touchdowns tonight. And they rolled it out, Sullivan, the tight end wide open, 30, 35 at the 40-yard line. Hamilton is going to take it out to the 45. Jeff Hamilton, the tight end, tackled by Veals. Misdirection pass play. Hamilton's going to block down and then shoot out to the flat. The misdirection really got the linebackers drawn to the left side. Big first down for uh, McNeese. And you could see down the field on the replay that Sams was decoyed. He was driving that corner well off the line of scrimmage. Running play here going to be stopped up by Patrick Reynolds. And Adrian Carson, let's uh, check with you. Good news for John Frazier, the outstanding running back for Western Kentucky. Bruised the inside of the right knee. They're going to retape around his uh, shoe. Once they put that back on, he is still active run. All righty. Good hustle there, Adrian. Made by Patrick Reynolds. Jacob Prim, the senior out of Foley, Alabama, comes back into the ball game, replacing Trey Hand at tailback. And play action to him. Pressure from the backside, and his pass is caught by Martin. And that's going to be plenty enough for the first down as he'll make the stop at the 39. It's a gain of 15. Best, Chandler defensively. Best pass play I've seen today out of uh, McNeese. And, and when I look at this score, and everybody's probably thinking you got the number one ranked team down by 18 points. But when you look at this, McNeese has played everything at home. Western Kentucky's used to going on the road. Advantage is really Western. Play action again. And he throws this one short. Pulled up on it a little bit as Ostelet uh, had come out of the backfield. And uh, I'm not sure if he thought that maybe Coach was a little too close and might get a pickoff. Well, back to that, Ron. When you have been home for a whole month, and all of a sudden you got to play the championship game at Chattanooga, Tennessee. Westerns used to uh, being on the road. Uh, that is big. Second and ten. Another play action. They roll the pocket and uh, gets that one off complete to Roban. And Roban is going to have the, the first down after a gain of 12. Might have got away with a block in the back too by B.J. Sams. Now there's a player down at the 33-yard line. It's very close to whether B.J. got away with one there. Thompson is the man who was down. And it looks as though uh, he is okay. Here's the block by B.J. Sams. Mia had his head in front on Charles Thompson. So it is a first down, and McNeese moves the chains. As Thompson gets checked over on the sideline by the training unit. And that's going to be five yards against McNeese. Roban came out of his stance with a man in motion. But you always tell a fullback round when he does that, keep moving. You can go in motion, you know, take a step and then go in motion. You can do that. It's legal. I thought they had another man moving up. Well, they may have. Yeah, no, they did. I'm they talking did. about the fullback. <laughs> yeah. Fullback can take a step forward and go in motion. And then fullback really started that. Now, one of the offensive linemen may have moved too. So it's first and 15. Blitz and the ball hit the umpire and now here comes the flag down. I think this is going to be interference on uh, Cavett number 31 because the ball was in the air and he made contact with Sam's. Yep, they're going to call pass interference against Western. See if we can pick a Sam's up. There's a contact. Umpire got could have caught the ball. Well, the interesting thing is what they are a part of play. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
So the penalty makes it a first down in the new line of scrimmage at the 29 yard line of Western. Pitch comes and here's the reverse and here's Sams 25 at the 19 yard line. He is going to be belted out of bounds by Beals. Gain of 12. So far, Western has been real good in the red zone. Now, all of a sudden, McNeese State's going to get close again. Can they get a touchdown? Or are they going to hold to another field goal attempt? Good job by Beals of making that tackle. Yeah, you could you could see him really marking his step to make sure his contact angle was just right. It's straight ahead goes Prim. Thompson again making the tackle, so he's okay and back in the ball game. Clock runs with four minutes and 20 seconds left in this one double-A national championship game. McNeese, number one ranked in the country. Trying to get the championship and for Western trying to win their first ever in football. Sam's in motion. Here comes the pressure and the wide open is the fullback and Luke Lawton still has it at the five. Touchdown, McNeese. Got to go for two here, Ron, too, to take it to a 10-point lead. Ask the ball to be uh, put on the left hash mark. Luke Clark with a good job of getting in the end zone. That was a really good second and third effort to get it in there. They have asked, as Mike said, for the ball to be placed down on the left hash mark and checking in as Britt Broadhead. Here's what you got to look for if you're Western Kentucky. Some kind of flood over here or some receiver coming backside against the action that way. Here's the two-point conversion. Play action and uh, wide open. The tight end Hamilton, and they get the two. So. Well, that was easy right there. Here's the touchdown. Misdirection pass play to Luke Lawton, and he really fights his way into the end zone. Two-point conversion. Misdirection pass play. Still the touchdown. And here's the two-point conversion. Backside tight end coming open in the flat. So we are back 24 to 14, the new score. And number one, McNeese trying to chip away at this lead by the Hilltoppers. And that drive right there, extremely impressive. Eight plays, 75 yards, using up two minutes and 13 seconds. But they got a big pass interference call on that play. Yep, they did. Short kick got to be taken by one of the up people, and it uh, looks as though he called for a fair yeah, he catch. Did. Well, Saturday, the top golfers in the PGA, the LPGA, and the Champions Tour battle for bragging rights. Jim Fury, Kari Webb, and Tom Kite head the field at the Wendy's Three Tour Challenge. Coverage begins Saturday at 4 Eastern on ABC. Now the McNeese defense really has got to button it up here. They can't afford Western Kentucky to keep grinding, grinding up this time. Back on the field, Mike, is John Frazier, the senior out of Central City, Kentucky. He got that knee. They put the pad on it. Here comes the option. And the pitch goes back to Frazier. He is in trouble. Him down and knocked down for a loss at the 17-yard line. This is, child. this is when you need a first down right here because the uh, momentum is clearly with the Cowboys now. And Jack Harbaugh knows full well he needs to come up with another trick. 
maybe another pass play to Jeremy Johnson that they have not run before this season. And the McNeese crowd who have been taken out of the ball game for the entire first half really on their feet and making a lot of racket now. Pass right over the middle in and out of the hands of the Reeves. One receiver route. Very well designed football play. Jerome Reeves, number two. But he's going against the best corner, Keith Smith. That's a nice job of getting his hand oh. in there. Man got to it. Yeah. Man got his hand around. He got him there a little quickly. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't get caught, though. No, he didn't. Big third down now for the toppers. Casey Rooney comes wide to the right side. Keep an eye on him. He had a huge catch in last week's ball game against Georgia Southern. And they flip the screen out, and he wide open is Frazier. 25, 30, 35, 40, and cuts back and still going at the 40-yard line. And McNeese will finally make the tackle at the 26. Garrison will make it, and that's the trick that Coach Harbaugh has been able to pull from out of his sleeve every time they needed a big play. A beautifully designed play to the tailback. Didn't get picked up. Came in, out of the backfield. Followed Jeremy Johnson, the fullback, and they flipped the field on the Cowboys. 55 yards on the pass play. And just like that, in one 10-second play, the McNeese crowd was brought to a whisper. They have been making a lot of noise. Bradley comes into the ball game at tailback. And he's a big one, 245 pounds. And he takes it off left guard for about four yards, almost five. Yeah, Bradley's out of Mansfield, Ohio also. Jack Harbaugh is from Crestline, Ohio. Maurice Bradley's about seven miles away. And Jerry Harbaugh, the brother of uh, Jack Harbaugh, recruits that area for him. They've done a nice job finding Bradley and uh, some of these players to add to this football team. He's big. Yeah, he is a 245. That's what I just said. They use him at short Tank. yardage a lot. Second down, they give it to him again. He hammers it right up the middle, breaks a tackle, goes inside the 15 yard line, and with another second effort, is going to be tackled finally at the 13. Broden and Fairchild combining on the stop. Get a good double team again. Backside guard Chris Price pulls Maurice Bradley in the secondary and he's a horse to bring down your base with a very good block on that play number 74. Western Kentucky play sucks and they're a running football team but the nine passes have come at the right time. So Frazier back in the ball game is they give him the big power guy, and now the speedster checks back in at tailback. And here comes the option. Quarterback will keep it down to around the seven-yard line. Roden again on the tackle. And Jason Michael doing a good job of operating this offense. He had one miscue back in the first half, probably a ball he should not have pitched. And it cost him on a turnover three points on a field goal just before halftime. But Jason Michael is a guy who started off at Army. Decided he didn't want to stay there. Too many people in front of him. Came down to Western because of an injury. Became a starter. And then they brought in junior college people ahead of him. He's really waited his turn. Even volunteered to play special teams. He wanted to play so bad. This season has been his year. Straight ahead with the tailback. And it's Frazier hammering his way to around the five. Royal defensively. You talk about special teams. Jason Michael was a personal protector on the punt team was on the kickoff coverage team just to get on the field. But Ron, the most important play in this football game is this play for McNeese. Now the quarter is going to come to a close. We're going to go to the fourth quarter. They have got to get them to settle for a field goal here. So that is the end of the third quarter. And let's take a timeout. Western Kentucky, 15 minutes away. They lead by 10. Or can McNeese come back? So welcome back and there you see the numbers Western 17 to 6 they led at halftime 
They scored the first time they had their hands on the football in the third quarter, but McNeese came back with an extremely impressive 75 yard drive. And right now, as Mike said before we went to break, this is the most important play as far as McNeese is concerned, and probably Western as well, with a third down, and they need the three yard line. Frazier, right side, high stepping, hit at the line of scrimmage, second effort, and he may have the first down. Royal finally put the stop on him, but his leg drive, and he just kept turning away. Boy, he's an impressive tailback. Looks like McNeese has his play stopped. There's the hit, even with the knee injury, kept his legs driving. Now the crowds are going to let you know if you hear the cheer from across the way, you know they got it. And if, uh, if the crowd cheers right here below us, which is not going to be the case, it is a first and goal for Western. That was a big play by Frazier. And the thing about it is Coach Harbaugh is not in any hurry. No. to get in the end zone. He just wants, if it takes four downs, he just wants to continue to run the clock. Frazier, 149 yards and two touchdowns on 18 carries. Rooney in motion, Frazier again. Going to be knocked down after maybe a gain of a half yard, and that's it. Pretty good penetration on that play by McNeese. John Frazier never got a chance to get started there on that play. Looks like an injury to Rod Gully. Looks like his arm is bothering him. Yeah, one of the players said, do you need us to call timeout? And he said, no, I'm staying in here. <laughs> he is one tough kid. Nine interceptions this year, certainly the best year that he's had. Gully has seven tackles in this ball game tonight. Second and goal. This time it's Hayes in motion. And the quarterback will keep it at the two, at the one. Touchdown, Jason Michael. The only question is, where does his knee go down at on this play? I mean, these players thought he was down. Yeah, probably right. Anyway, the linesman right there says touchdown Western Kentucky. Ten play drive, 79 yards, using up five minutes. And Martinez with the extra point knocks it right down the middle. 13 minutes and 49 seconds left in his one double-A championship game. Jason Michael takes it into the end zone. Now it is a 17-point margin. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back. It will be McNeese's time on offense. So there you see the score, 31 to 14. Western Kentucky stretches their lead out. A lot of championships going on. Tomorrow, the Division Three up in uh, Virginia. Yeah, Mon Union uh, favored to win that game. Taking on uh, Trinity of Texas. And here's a pooch kick. And this one is going to be gathered in at the 24-yard line by Prim. And Prim gets shot and knocked down immediately. Here's Jason Michael on the uh, option play. Did his leg go down on the one-yard line before he got in the end zone? I'd say it did. A Wise move by Jack Harbaugh pooching that kick. You know, you, you, you're ahead by 17, you pooch the kick, they can't return it, you don't put it into the dangerous kick returners. He's done a great job of coaching in this football game. Marcus Trahan comes back in a tailback. They go play action to him and throw it out of here in the flat to Luke Lawton, the fullback, and wow, does he get hit by Thompson. There's been some licks passed in this football game tonight. Well played game. When you look at both these teams, I'm sure in the state of Kentucky, you got Kentucky and Louisville. I, I think Western Kentucky could match up with them. And then when you look at uh, McNeese, I'm sure Tulane, uh, 
would be a team that uh, that's fair try to play. Trahan breaks it big. Fairchild on the bench being attended to and obviously has injured a shoulder. They have uh, taken off his shoulder pads. Louder making that last tackle. Western Kentucky Ron has a great history in football. Well, they could really add to it tonight if they won their first national championship. Pass wide open and overthrown. That was Martin. Difference in this football game, McNeese has never got anything easy tonight. Here they have a chance to get an easy play. Flea Martin beats uh, Antonio Beals. Pendarvis knows he missed a touchdown pass. But nothing easy. They made McNeese work for everything they get. Martin's been thrown to eight times, and he has four catches in the ball game. Quick pass. Got it complete. Breaks a couple of tackles. Still on his feet. Breaks three tackles. What an effort by B.J. Sams. They've run the play all night, but that's a bread and butter, and they just keep going back to it. B.J. Sams in the first game with Western Kentucky had six catches for 111 yards in the touchdown. They made him work tonight. You see Coach almost got that football and almost knocked it down. It almost went right between his arms. Sings this one near sideline complete to Martin. Gain of 16 yards in the play. So offensively, McNeese has been able to move the football. They had the 75-yard drive and moving right down the field now. Good protection here. The flea gets open. Another first down as they scrimmage now from the western 30-yard line. He put it on the ground. Trahan breaks out of a tackle at the 25 and still on his feet to the 19-yard line. That will be another first down for McNeese. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you. When McNeese goes back on defense, they're going to have a hole in the defensive backfield. The strong safety, Fairchild, well, simply isn't so strong anymore. He's out of the game with a bruised right shoulder, possible separation. Okay, Adrian, thank you. Now the clock. We're going to keep looking up there very, very often. 12.04, and the clock is now running left in the ball game. They want to throw it again. McNeese right over the middle, has it complete, and that's the tight end, Jeff Hamilton. He's close to another yeah. first down. He is running. They're, They're using the clock wisely here. Another first down. Here's where it gets tough, McNeese. Western has done a good job inside the 10-yard line. Trahan is the tailback, and he gets the handoff, tries to bounce it to the outside, but he maybe has a half yard on the play, and that's it. They're going to have to throw it in, Ron. Patrick Riddles, yeah. the young man we told you about, his brother plays at Ohio State. Both of them with an opportunity, I would say a rare opportunity for brothers to win two national championships in one year. It's uh, shaken up a little bit over on the far sideline. Second down and goal. He drills this one and it is knocked away and almost intercepted. This time, Charles Thompson was the one who got a hand on it. We well, figure they got two downs here. Yeah, with the third down for with sure. The clock and the way things are going, and Western's ability to eat up the clock. Last week, a huge goal line stand out of Georgia Southern. Help win it by Western. Pressure. Going to have to dump this one off, and it's Trahan in the flat at the five, and he's going to be stopped at the three and a half yard line by Chandler. Now a decision by Tommy Tate. Do you take the field goal and go behind by two touchdowns, or 
There's a penalty flag here holding. Uh, Western's going to move him back further. Got to take it back. So you can see that they signal, yes, they want the penalty, says Coates, with 11 minutes left in the ball game, instead of having it at the three and a half. On the offense, it's a 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, third down. So it pushes it back to the 20 yard line, third down and goal. Here he is, right here, is your best receiver, Sams. From the shotgun. Going to throw it for the end zone. Sams overthrown. Got to take the field goal here now, Ron. Yeah, Marino is uh, trotting out quickly. If nothing else, cut it to a 14-point lead. Well, they had Sams. They just couldn't get it to him. Mike, in the second half, they've been able to break receivers free, but uh, Pendarvis has been unable to hit them. 37-yard field goal attempt. Western got a big piece of it, and it's blocked. And the roar goes up across the way. Last week, a huge goal line stand against Georgia Southern. This is as good as that right here. We'll take a break. On the sideline, Charles Thompson and defensive uh, friends, and they have had a big night. E 10 minutes and 39 seconds left to go in this ball game, and Western, with the block of the field goal, takes it over to the 20-yard line, and McNeese comes away with no points on that what looked as though it was going to be fruitful drive. Option play and Jason Michael will hold on to it. Adrian Karsten, let's check back with you. Ron, I don't think, in my opinion, there's any other team in college football at any division for which Hadley Prince could play except the Cowboys. Here is why. They're playing for a national championship tonight, but he has been involved in the national championship, man. Look at these belt buckles. I could eat Sunday dinner off of these things. He's placed fourth. That's his highest placement ever. He's been calf roping, steer chasing, you name it. You know the sport a little bit better than I do ever since he was three, four years old. Well, we're going to take a look at some of his uh, some of his talents on horseback here in uh, just a little while. Pitch back goes to the tailback, and a nice job of tripping Frazier up at the line of scrimmage. Uh, Adrian, back in high school, uh, he not only was a star on the football field, but he was a rodeo state champion. He won the Louisiana High School Rodeo Championship in 1998. And look at him here on this bronc. Wow. And he placed fourth in the 1997 National High School Finals. And what's really interesting is when we visited it with him on the phone the other day, he talked about and gave great examples of how it helps your strength, your agility, your balance, your toughness to have done rodeo. His dad was very good at it as well. Pass wide open over the middle of the tight end, and that is Rodgers. Coach Harbaugh just continues to pull more magic out of his sleeve. Good play calling, Ron. And a good play action pass to Frazier. Tight end Matt Rogers gets wide open and Prince makes a tackle and he's saying those Broncos are earlier are easier than picking up these toppers. If I had a player of the game right now, it'd be Jeremy Johnson, the fullback. He has played sick, didn't come out for warm up. He's been involved in blocking more big plays. Little misdirection play. Wow, here's another tough hit by a defensive player, and it's Hadley Prince who comes up to make the tackle. 
Uh, Hadley, not only a star in football, his other passion in life is rodeo, as we said. And it's that passion that he feels has helped him become the player he is today. You look at it in a lot of ways. I mean, the strength-wise, conditioning-wise, agility-wise, it has a lot to do with the same thing. Body control, overpowering something bigger than you, and just being mean. You got to go out there, and you got to you have to want it, and you got to believe in yourself that you can do anything. Because I mean, you're looking at a, a bull that's 2,000 pounds, and you weigh what most people probably 200 pounds. So I mean, you're looking at 10 times bigger than you. So I mean, what do you do? You have to have a lot of heart and go out there and play well with the biggest and the baddest, and see what happens, and never give up. Well, all of those things are, are his motto. Uh, he was player of the year in his conference. And what does he want to be? Well, being around rodeo all his life, uh, he wants to be a vet. And is going to take the proper test uh, at the end of the school year. And uh, that is his goal. That's what he seeks. 17 straight years, a member of his family had been in the rodeo finals of some category as we said his dad very very good at rodeo as well third down they need to take it to the 45 yard line and here's a reverse and it's been defense completely and Hayes tackled way back at the 39 yard line by Keith Smith and Keith Smith is another player who's had a great game he was right there on the reverse So let's see if Western will kick the ball to Sams as he is the deep man. The last couple of punts by Claiborne have not been exactly what he was looking for. And they've got the return on. This is a low line drive. It's going to bound at the 30. And because he let it bounce where he did, now Western trying to push him into the football so they can make the recovery. But it's going to go with uh, McNeese. It's Chandler who shoved him into the football. 39 yards and a kick, and we'll take a break. 625 left in our championship. Hilltoppers by 17. Coming up after college football, it's ESPN 2's Friday Night Fights from Miami. Hi, everybody. This is Bob Papa in our main event. Former world champion Yoel Casamayor squares off against Yanni Vargas. Now back to the 1AA championship game with Ron Franklin and Mike Godfrey. Let's go, so the smiles be getting, go, getting a little bit bigger over on the western side go, Tommy, because now we are beyond go, the midway point of this uh, national championship game for the 1AA title. Six minutes, 25 seconds left. Ben Darvis from the shotgun. That's Prim out in the flat. He's got a lot of running room. It's a 25 at the 30. He'll pick up the first down, and they say his knee touched at the 33 as Kincaid made the stop. Rob, we were talking earlier about the uh, Hilltoppers great football tradition Nick Dennis started it uh, Jimmy Fikes a quarterback former quarterback for Western was a great coach for them and uh, of course Jack Harbaugh has taken it down to a next level Jack coming out on the field right now to uh, to check on his injured player Brian Lauder I believe yep Brian Lauder Well, he came up grabbing that, uh, that left ankle. Young man, that in case you missed it in the first half, we talked about not only gets it done on the field, as he is a very, very tough hitter, but uh, Louder also is a 4.0 student in the classroom. He's going to go to law school, and he started off as a walk-on and just played special teams at first, and then the next thing you know, they gave him a scholarship, and it has really paid off. We will step aside here as they continue to check him over. 31 to 14, Hilltoppers lead.
All right, everybody, Friday Night Fights coming up right after the game. Max, Joel Casamayor in our main event tonight, one of the best in the world. Yeah, an elite fighter. If he's not the best fighter at junior lightweight, he's second, but he's way up there. The end of year awards as well on Friday Night Fights right after the game. Louder being checked over on the sideline as uh, we return, and the trainers are going to get a closer look at his ankle. Meanwhile, Antonio Thomas, a sophomore from Louisville, has checked in replacing him. Pass right over the middle complete, and here's Sams, and Sams gets by one tackler and finally knocked out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Charles Thompson, a gain of 34. Brought him across the middle on the route. See the feet of B.J. Sams over the middle, pass behind him, he reached back, made the catch, it shows you that great speed. Mike, there have been a lot of impressive players in this ball game tonight. Thompson is still another one, and he oh, ran he that is. play down all the way across the field. Ron, he is a very good linebacker. Pumped it once, going to go on top. He has a man there, and the ball is tipped away. That's Broadhead as it was knocked away by Chandler. And that was a good play right there as they faked that quick screen in the flat and then took it on top. Looks like Chandler had the wind knocked out of him, and he is down at the four-yard line. His training staff has really had to be they in, gotta shape. Be in shape. <laughs> yeah, you're right. When you talk about Western Kentucky, O'Ron, 92, Jack Harbaugh was summoned to the president's office, and he told him, he said, we're going to drop football. And he said, I think I got the votes. And uh, there's nine members of that board of regents. And uh, he was told to tell his team they were going to drop football, not to have spring practice. He said, we're going to have spring practice anyway. The players voted on it. Then the meeting, Jack told me, he said it was a nay, then a yay, then a nay, then a yay. It was 4-4. Four, four. And the last guy voted, he said, yay. He said, we're going to have football here. So that's the, they going to need to find that regent that was a ninth <laughs> region because now they, they it, talked about dropping football. They're going to win, if they hold on here for 6-0-2, they're going to win a national championship 10 years later. I say give a ring to that guy, the border region guy that give the fifth vote. Well, as Mike said, they got 362 seconds to get off the clock. In the flat, the ball in and out of the hands of Prim. Couldn't hold on. That only took three seconds, 5.59 now. And Ron, the, the last part of that story is that Jack Harbaugh put a sign up. The, those who remain will be a champion. And uh, these guys have uh, gone through a lot, Jack Harbaugh especially, uh, at Western Kentucky. And for them to be this close to the mountaintop has to be a great satisfying, satisfying thrill. McNeese from the shotgun, a blitz up the middle, and that pass incomplete, and only because he had to rush it. Charles Thompson was coming after him big time. Yeah, Sir Charles has had a great football game. Leading tackler uh, shows you why he's acting at the linebacker spot. Well, the big, the big catchphrase at Western this year has been finish, and that's what the teammates on the sideline are trying to get that defense to do one more time. This pass well overthrown and incomplete at the 10-yard line. And B.J. Sams, the intended receiver, and with the fourth down play incomplete, Western now five minutes and 46 seconds away. When you talk about national champions, uh, I don't care what division you're in, you earn it. And you are earn it on the field in this division. Frazier again operating at tailback. Big Jeremy Johnson, who didn't come out and warm up tonight, had a stomach virus, but he was there on the very first play. We were about to change our starting lineups 
And uh, all of a sudden we looked up and the big fella came running out of the locker room. He's the last guy to come out on the field. And he has contributed so much as probably the thing that'll be most satisfying to Jack Harbaugh if they win this championship, Mike, and it appears that they're going to, is so many people have stepped up. It's been the Jeremy John, the Mike, the Jason Michaels who have been so consistent. Key blocks by Big Rufus Sanders. Uh, a lot of folks. And a and an outstanding night by John Frazier, the tailback. They give it to Frazier. He's met head on at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a third down at about five. Ron, there's no des more deserving coach than uh, Jack Harbaugh. Been in coaching for 40 years. Uh, Michigan, Western Michigan, uh, all over the place. And uh, he's done a great job. He's a coach's guy. Well, at 63 years old, Jack Harbaugh is at a point in his life where he is able to look back and reflect about his football career and also his life. I look back and the lesson I learned through all those years is be patient and uh, and uh, not be impatient to get that next job, not be impatient to, to try to judge in f where you're going to be in the next five years. Uh, judge where you're going to be in the next five days or where you're going to be in the next five minutes. I know I'm so much more comfortable with myself uh, right now than I was in, in Kalamazoo many, many, many years ago. I don't know how our players would, would describe that. I don't, I don't think they think I've mellowed much, but I know I'm more comfortable with myself. I know who I am, a very old man in the waning years of a very mediocre career, and I'm comfortable with that and looking forward uh, to this football game like no other football game I've ever looked forward to in my entire life. And you know, Mike, they did it the hard way because they <laughs> they got to play nothing at home and they had to play Whoa. at some difficult places. Georgia Southern, I, I watched that game and I thought, what an impressive football team. And, and the Hilltoppers just simply would not back off and would not give up. Michael pitches it back. What well, Frazier had to reach down low to grab that one, and it's going to be a loss on the play. But they used some clock as Cedric Lars, a sophomore out of Shreveport, is there to make the tackle. And now, still another timeout is called by McNeese with 4:43 left in the ball game. And this is what I'm talking about. Here is how they got to the championship game. McNeese played at home because they earned it. They were the number one team. They knocked off the defending champions. They were down 17 to nothing to beat Montana. Then they came from behind to win over Villanova last week. But when you look at Western, the number three seed or the number one, three ranked team, Western Illinois, they got them. Then they draw the number two team in one double A and had to play them in their backyard and they win that ball game. So you talk about not going the easy way, the conventional way. Yeah, and Ron, Western Illinois beat them during the regular season, so they had to beat them a second time. So it's been a key for them to the second time around. Uh, teams had to have beaten them. Uh, they are going to beat both of those teams if they hold on here with 443. And, and to finish, Jack, uh, he's got two boys in coaching. Jim and Oakland Raiders and John at the Philadelphia Eagles. Nice legacy. Claiborne waits for the snap back at the 22-yard line. Gets a good one, and again, McNeese has got to return on. Driving spiral, Sam's on the run, and he caught it right on the sideline and had to step out of bounds. That was a good job by Claiborne to make sure that they did not get a return. 34 yards on the kick. Coming up immediately following us here, Friday Night Fights. That's next here on ESPN2. Ron, when you look at McNeese, too, uh, there's a team that great year. Only lost to Nebraska. Corcoran comes in at quarterback, and he'll operate from the shotgun. Throws it back, and is intercepted by one of the linemen, Corey Shaw. And Shaw is still fighting inside the 10 and down to the 9-yard line. Backup defensive end, Corey Shaw getting some time in the football game, picks the pass off, and they can start celebrating in Bowling Green, Kentucky.
Corvettes on the road up there. <laughs> but they should give Jack Harbaugh a Corvette. Well, look at this big fella, 6'3". About 250 pounds, and that shows a lot of agility right there. He was looking for somebody to bring him down, though. He, he wasn't going all the way to the end zone. Look Flea his, Martin got him. Look at his uh, teammates over there with the celebration. So the most important thing here is the clock, not scoring. And the pitch, and they take it right into the line, and a loss by Frazier as Zeno was there to make the stop. One of the things that Western has done a really good job with tonight is defensive front. Nobody has really been able to handle them this entire season uh, of, of uh, McNeese. And we haven't called, you know, Jones, we've only called his name a couple of times. Uh, Kennebrew. Yeah, Jack told me both the defensive tackles from McNeese are as good as uh, anybody they've played. Straight ahead with the running play, and Frazier almost broke that one as he's tripped up, goes down at the five, and McNutt got a hand out to, uh, to knock him off his feet. Clock runs with three minutes. We're about to hit three and a half minutes left in the championship. One double A. I tell you, I want to say uh, a word to the people here in Chattanooga. They have taken this championship game. They have embraced it. This is a beautiful, beautiful little stadium here. And uh, they just, they really do a nice job. The town rolls out the red carpet for the two teams that make it here. And uh, I salute them because they've done a fabulous job. Frazier right up the middle, knocked down at the six yard line. And now McNeese is gonna take their final timeout. And they just got it called with two minutes and 55 seconds left in the ball game. It'll be fourth down for Western. Key to the ball game, uh, John Frazier had 100 yards, uh, 110 yards in the first half, and he just added to it the second half. But you know who turned things around? It was a defensive player. This side of the field was going absolutely nuts. As you look at Frazier, 272 all-purpose yards and two touchdowns tonight. But Maslowski, they're about to go on offense after stopping Western Cole, three downs and out. And you're thinking, boy, momentum could jump up and bite Western early. And who curbed it? Maslowski. And they went on. They threw the, the uh, pass to the big fullback, and they scored the touchdown. And that, to me, was the turning point in this football game as far as momentum. Western has been the better team uh, in this football game. I know uh, McNeese got them early in the year, but they have come on since that loss. 23-yard attempt by Martinez. And he knocks it right down the middle. So with two minutes, 51 seconds left in this one double-A championship game, the Hilltoppers go three points more on top. Coming up immediately following the one double-A championship, it is Friday Night Fights, Bob Papa and Teddy Atlas. I'll take Atlas. You know those three No, I know that. I know. I well, just, just, wanted to make I sure. just uh, throw that out there. By the way, with that field goal that uh, Martinez just kicked, he now becomes the career leader all time uh, for the uh, Western Kentucky team with 49 field goals. So everybody trying to get into the record books tonight. But the most important thing for Jack Harbaugh and his coaching staff is they're going to win a first national championship for their school. You talked about the two sons of her coaches. His daughter is married to Tom Crane, who's the head basketball coach at Marquette. So coaches abound yep. in the Harbaugh family. And he's from Crestline, Ohio, and they're very proud of uh, Jack Harbaugh. Tears. Uh, Ron, you, it's a long year, and you you get to the mountain, and then all of a sudden you can't get up. 
but there's another day and uh, you, you go back to work and see if you can get back in this game next year. Well, Tommy's done a great job down there and that, uh, winning the percentage being as high as it is is uh, is not just happening. Uh, there will be more chances for McNeese, I can promise you. Too well coached not for it to happen. Ball goes in the ground and then recovered at the 28 yard line. And so now we got two minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the ball game with that 34 to 14 lead by Western. We talked about it at the opening a team that got off to the best start was going to win this football game. Western did that. Scott Pendarvis has had a good football game but just had some drop passes early in the game. They couldn't put things together uh, and they never got a big play against this defense. And you know that's something as uh, Trahan pops it to a big opening and takes it out to the 35. That's something that McNeese has been able to do in every ball game that they've won this year. They got the big play at least one if not two out of either Martin or out of Sam's. And David Elson came up with a game plan tonight to keep him from getting his big plays. From the shotgun. Corcoran has that one complete and that is to Broadhead at the 44 yard line. Don't you think they should give Jack Harbaugh Corvette? I uh, think Western Kentucky. I mean you win a national championship. It's the only well, I, national championship you've ever won. Well and for people that say well why do you just come up with Corvette because that's where the plant is. They got the plant right don't there go. so it's easy for them. If you're listening, get that Corvette ready. Redwood. That ball is tipped, but Broadhead makes the reception. Now the, here's the trophy that is about to be presented for the 1AA football championship. That's as important as a Corvette. Believe me. Well, he stops the clock with 144. What they're doing right now, Mike, they just put in a call to the accounting department and they're going to let you know what your payments are going to be every month for that Corvette for Jack because you're going to pay for it. They're not. <laughs> well, now, here's what I want to see. Nobody has made a move as of yet, but. Uh, <laughs> No, he got the law. He, he's, he's got, got the, the law on well, his side. I'll tell you what, that policeman better put on a raincoat. As the pass is thrown to Trahan out in the flat, and he'll take it inside the 45. Patrick Reynolds defensively. Here's what he told that policeman. You want your ring. <laughs> you protect me from that Gatorade. They're going to get him oh, anyway. This is going to happen. Yeah, they, they don't care if that policeman is there. Jack trying to pick up a screen there <laughs> moving among the players. And did he trap it or did he catch it? Osterlet, he did make the reception. <laughs> well, <laughs> they decided that David Elson is the man they were going to get. <laughs> Let him freeze. He's younger. About to hit 60 seconds left in this championship game. The ball is tipped and knocked away on the second down play. That's John Drummond. <laughs> I'll tell you, folks, it's it's a little nippy to be taking uh, uh, an ice bath. See, you go back up to Jack Harbaugh. He's got three policemen around him. And he's got specific orders. Don't let anything happen to me. I still bet they get him. Wait no, see. they're not going to get him. On third down with 57 seconds left, deep over the middle, and it is intercepted by Charles Thompson. Well, that accentuated, that just puts a period on a truly, truly good game by that sophomore out of Louisville, Kentucky. Charles Thompson, 6'1", 235, dropped back in coverage and looked as though he probably should have been a receiver the way he went up and grabbed that one. Those grins say it all. And when players come off and hug the coach, that picture tells it all. <laughs> well,
Well, they know that with that, the headsets come off, and uh, David Elson says, come here just the way we worked on it, and you got the interception. 49 ticks left on that clock, and Western will go down on a knee, and they'll start to celebrate across the way and also up in the state of Kentucky as Western is going to capture their first ever one double-A national title. If you stay, you'll be a champion. The sign they've got in the football offices at Western Kentucky. Now, the last couple of years, they've lost games late that they had big leads in, and the war cry this year has been finish. Don't let it get away from you. Finish. And tonight, they have finished and finished it well. 14 seconds down to 13, and here come the players on the field. And they are running up to the sign in that south end zone, and they are jumping up and down on the 1AA championship sign in Chattanooga because they will remember this trip for the rest of their lives. Now they're trying to get the table on the field for the trophy presentation. And let's go down to the field and Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Coach, after 40 years in coaching at the high school, college, you name it, all the levels, you won your first national championship in your first championship. Say, say that one more time. After 40 years in coaching, you have a national championship. In, in, your, in your life, could you ever believe that something like that happened to a guy? He's kind of just struggles. <laughs> I, 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 for the first time in my life, I'm just totally speechless. We had the greatest bunch of youngsters that I've ever been associated with in my life. We have a great, great coaching staff, great university, and people stuck by us when uh, when times are tough, and hopefully this is a little bit of a reward. And all you old coaches out there over 60-year-old, daggone it, don't you ever give up and give in. This is our time. 60 guys are still in vogue. Here's your hardware from the chair of the Division I AA. NCAA college football, the national championship trophy. You finished just like your war cry. Ronnie's otherwise involved. Okay. So the final score, Western 34 and McNeese State 14. Coming up next, Friday night fights. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the Internet. For Mike Godfrey, Adrian Karsten, and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. And again, we say a congratulations to Western Kentucky and to this gentleman here, Jack Harbaugh. A sincere congratulations on his first. Good night from Chattanooga, Tennessee.